Okay, we're back online. Here we are. And um, we have that all cleaned off. Uh, real nice right in the edge here where the plywood deck meets the veneer. Real clean in that corner. And I just wanted to show you here, uh, we left the, the uh, light strips hanging out over the um, cockpit, open cockpit area. Uh, and those will, after the resin is cured and hard, those will be very easy to trim off and um, clean uh, right along the cockpit edge. It would be hard to do it while the epoxy is still wet though. You'd probably tend to pull some pins out in the process, so we don't want to do that. Anyway, looks very nice. Uh, nice accent. Um, frequently uh, with wood, the most dramatic use of wood is to use dramatically contrasting colors next to each other. And that red you can see where the epoxy's on it, how that turns quite a darker, quite a bit darker, and contrasts nicely with that Okume deck. Okay, now we're going to move over and um, give you a view of my floor here. Uh, we're going to move over here to the table and be working with these strips. We'll need to zoom out here so we can see a little bit better. Um, and we've done a bit of an about face here. Um, from what we told you earlier, which is fine. We were talking about cedar strips, and that's um, that would work fine. Uh, cedar strips along the edge here of the cockpit surround, the uh, splash guard around the cockpit. Um, and cedar would have been nice and would work fine. Cedar is quite flexible, it's very light. Um, the only negative, and it glues well. Cedar glues especially well because the epoxy penetrates it easily. It's not such a hard wood. Um, the only negative of cedar uh, is that it's a little bit softer. So um, it'll dent more easily. Of course, when it's coated with epoxy, that gives a harder surface, but still, if you hit it hard with a paddle blade or something, it'll dent a little bit. So. Um, Two options, we could do cedar along this uh, edge, or now uh, we can use a wood called sapili. And um, the sapili is quite different from cedar in its properties. It's a very hard, dense wood. It's a lot heavier, um, and it doesn't glue quite as well. It still glues successfully, and the epoxy will do fine with it. But um, the advantage of sapili along this edge is after five years it won't have gotten dinged and nicked as much as the cedar would have. Um, and as far as the weight in this one thin strip of wood, you know, just this thin strip, we're, we're talking about, you know, a fraction of an ounce, maybe, maybe an ounce difference, but I don't think it's that much. So, um, so let's go with the sapili along this edge. Either one's a good choice. Um, the sapili in fact, um, you probably have some extra cedar. You might have an extra strake or two of cedar. And if you find the sapili is too uh, brittle to make the curve um, that we're going to be putting into it, uh, and you snap your sapili, use the cedar. The cedar's more flexible. Um, but I think the sapili will work fine. And it will be less likely to get nicked and dented. So um, also it will be a nice contrast. It'll just like the um, strips we put on the deck, the sapili is a rich red color of wood. Often cedar will be that color too, and you could have found a cedar piece that would contrast nicely. But um, let's go with the sapili, and um, then you might ask, why not build the whole boat out of sapili? It'll be super, super hard and not nick. Well, your boat won't weigh um, under 20 pounds if you build it out of sapili. It'll probably weigh 28 or 30 pounds. Sapili is about 35 and maybe even up to 40 pounds per cubic foot. You pick up a plank of sapili, it's heavy. Um, cedar is about 20 to 24 pounds per cubic foot. And um, so we're building an ultralight boat. The cedar is really strong and very, very light. So um, much better choice than sapili for your hull. But for one strip of wood as an accent and just kind of a decorative, um, strip to keep um, the edge of the splash guard from getting dented, the sapili is a real good choice. Okay, so we're going to mix up, you know, it's not going to take very much. I would say 
about one and a half. We'll mix about one and a half large marks of resin and um, then we'll get to work gluing these uh, strips on. And uh, then we'll also, actually let's mix up two, uh, we'll mix up two large marks of resin because we want to coat the back side of the um, piece that goes across behind the backrest. So we'll mix up two large marks of clear resin and see how far we get with that. Okay, be back with you in a minute. Okay, back again. Um, we have two large marks of resin mixed up. And now take a look at your uh, Sapili strips. Um, you can tell the difference. It's, it's a much denser, denser, harder wood, much heavier than the cedar. Um, and identify which side is the smoother side. You want that side up. We'll put epoxy on the rougher side. And actually, the roughness is an advantage because the epoxy can get into the grain a little bit better when it's a little rougher. Um, when you're doing really critical glue ups with epoxy on a very dense wood, you are actually, and this is not not a time we need to do this, or we'll, we're not going to do this, um, but if it's a critical uh, structural glue up, it's really good to take a really coarse grit sandpaper, like 50 grit sandpaper, and sand across the grain, just really abrading that surface, tearing it up as much as you can, and then the epoxy actually has a lot of wood fibers that it can get into the um, pores of the wood and into the grain of the wood better because of all that, uh, because you've torn up the wood grain so much on the gluing surface. But in this case, we don't need to do that. We're just gonna coat this first piece with epoxy on the rougher side, the side that isn't as presentable. And this is the clear epoxy. We definitely want clear epoxy here because we want to saturate the wood as much as possible and um, get into the wood grain where we can. Okay, and just a little preview. Uh, <laughs> first thing is to make sure, in fact, I should have emphasized this when we were putting the glue on the edge of the um, cockpit surround pieces. Um, the edge we're working with is the top edge, this edge here. This, uh, that's the concave edge. The convex edge, the bottom, is going, going to be down, and we don't want to coat that now. Just coating the top edge. Um, if you think of it like a canoe, with the bow up, we're coating the top edge. Okay, and... Then, once we get this coated, we'll use, and, uh, we'll use a little phenolic powder to thicken it slightly because we don't want... So we're putting this on fairly thin here just to, just to saturate. We don't want to have a dry joint anywhere. Um, and this edge is still sticky. Uh, the edge, I'm sorry, down of your screen. The edge here is still sticky. Um, so we're going to get a good chemical on there. And uh, if that edge had dried, it probably and was really not sticky anymore because of um, setting up completely. You'd want to go over it again with more epoxy. If it has been too long, you want to wipe it down with acetone um, and then, and then uh, coat it again. But it's best that it's still sticky. So. Moving along here, if you're working in a really warm climate, you might not have wanted to um, include these two steps together. To, pro to you might not have wanted to coat that before you put the uh, the decorative veneer on the deck. Um, so uh, one of the things you kind of learn is how much you can do with epoxy before it starts to set off. And I knew it's quite cool today. Uh, probably 50, 50, 56, 57. I guess um, as far as you're learning about how things set up, when I don't tell you the temperature, you just have to go by what I'm wearing. This is a fairly warm vest I have on today. So, um, and a wool shirt. So, um, if I'm in a t-shirt, you can assume it's fairly warm. Okay, so we got that coated. We'll coat the second one, and then 
We're going to coat the bottom of the RC deck, uh, of the back deck, sorry, not RC deck. And our epoxy is holding out pretty well. We'll coat one side of this back deck piece, but we won't get close to the curved edge. We go all the way to the back edge, the straight edge. Um, we can coat all the way back to that edge, but we don't want to coat too close to the edges, the outside edges, or to the curved part. So leave the outside edges 3 eighths of an inch, leave 3 eighths of an inch along the curved part, and along the second outside edge. And we'll see, we may need more epoxy after coating this. We'll see. This does not need to be a heavy, thick coating. Remember, we're building a lightweight boat. Just brush it out pretty thin. I don't think I'll get into squeaking this. We don't really need to have it that thin. It's a small piece, so uh, just brushing it out thin is going to be fine. Okay, that's done. Now, let's see how much epoxy we have left. Well, we're going to mix um, some phenolic in what we have left, and then we'll mix more epoxy after we use this. That way, that way we'll have a better idea of exactly how much more we'll need. This is one of the interesting things. But this spoon has already been used for silica, um, and so it's covered with silica. That's one of the nice things about these spoons. Uh, the epoxy won't stick to them. It just peels, pops right off. Just bend the spoon just enough, flex the spoon just a little bit. And that's true of your um, squeegees as well. Uh, you flex them after the epoxy is completely hard, you flex them a little bit and the epoxy pops off. Okay, you want to get all of it off so you don't have little chunks in your mixture. Okay, so about. I didn't put quite all of that spoonful in. Um, it actually, it was only half a spoonful to start with. I only put about a quarter of a spoonful in. Let's see, we don't want it too thick. That looks pretty good. Um, there's not really much epoxy here. <laughs> so you don't want to get too much silica in there. I mean, too much. This is phenolic powder. Um, you don't want to get too much of the phenolic powder in. Okay, let's... Uh, <clears throat> Go down so you can see where we're working. There we go. And we're just going to lay that right along the edge there. Keep it from dripping down on the floor. I don't have the cardboard under this edge. No, oh, here's this. There we go. Right on the floor. Okay, let's get our cardboard out. So we can grip on the cardboard. There we go. Paper towel. And clean up that drip so we don't track it all over. Okay, there. That's probably the best thing to learn from this video is that you, <laughs> you see me when I drip something, I'll clean it up right away. Um, and that is it's tempting just to leave it, but you end up, you know, you'll step in it. Okay, so we're getting, you know, a fairly heavy coating on this edge. It's a fairly thin edge, so it's not going to hold much epoxy. But we're getting a fairly thin, thick coating on here. As thick as we can without it just running right, dripping right off. Because, um, the phenolic powder is a good thickener, but it's, it won't hold its, it won't keep from running off as well as the silica. So you can't get it too thick here. The reason we're using phenolic here instead of silica is uh, partly the color will work better with the sapili and partly this is just a very thin strip and there won't be any real structural stress on such a thin strip. It's never going to let go. So. Um, this epoxy, the uh, phenolic mixture will be more than strong enough. You get some of the drips along here. Okay, so we got about halfway down this first piece here. So um, let's mix one more large mark. That should be all we need. And then we'll be back here in a minute. Okay, we have the whole edge uh, coated now. And we're ready to um, start the sticky, messy part of getting that sapili attached to the top of the splash guard. And tape, let's get some pieces of tape cut. So we're ready to roll here. Okay. 
We'll work to stick the tape to the table there. Um, so I'm trying to think of what I want to stick it to. Um, I want about a four inch piece of tape. So uh, let's put them right in place actually. So we'll have one right there. You know, push that on pretty hard. This one I'm making a little longer. It's right in the curve here where there's the most force needed to hold that piece on. And our goal is to get the sapile approximately centered on the um, splash guard. And we're going to do two pretty close together here because that's where the curve is the deepest. So um, right here where the curve is the deepest we have these two longer pieces. Okay, as the curve flattens out um, we don't need quite such long pieces and we don't need them as often so that should be fine there. If we need more pieces of tape we'll add some pieces. We don't mind changing our minds here. <laughs> and good to keep open to approaches. Now with this tape we won't be able to clean off under the edge of the tape. And uh, we just have to live with that. That's just the way it'll be. Um, you can think of the areas under the tape if they have more epoxy under them as little gussets maybe. Okay, now let's rub those pieces of tape on pretty hard. Here, rub them on with um, my fingernail through the glove. And that should make them hold. If you get them too tight, like if you rub them on with the handles of the handle of the scissors, um, they'll pull more wood grain off than you want when you release them when you try to take the tape off. So I think this will work just right. Okay, now we got those on. And now we're gonna flip this over. Good. And let's put our piece of sapili in place. We're going to extend it a little bit farther at the front than we need to because we can sand that off later. Okay, and let's get that first piece of tape on there. Later on, we're going to center the sapili. Um, uh, right now, let's just get it on there. Okay, there we go. And next tape, get these tight in the curve. Okay, I don't know how well you can see. I'm kind of blocking you, aren't I? And I'm sticky, and this is a little tricky. Everything. Okay, pushing it down into that depth of the curve there, and tight with that tape, and rub that tape on good and strong, or else it'll, it's going to let go as soon as you look away. Okay, so rub that tape on really tight. Rub this tape on really tight. That's the hard part. We've, we've gotten past the hard part. Um, <laughs> My thing is, I wish I'd brought that up a little bit farther. So, let's, um, let's do that. I'm not going to be happy with it there. So, uh, never good to have to release your tape, because it's not going to stick again very well. Um, but maybe it'll stick well enough. We'll see. We'll add some tape. Okay, so we're going to skid that up a little bit. Okay, whoa, it's going all wild. Ah, it's getting away from me. Okay, there we go. Now a little more even. There. So half inch sticking out beyond the back there. Because that wants to fair right. Let's see if this will hold. We may have to add new tape here. Which is going to be messy. Okay. Good, we have gloves, isn't it? I don't think I want to do this part without gloves. Okay, and it's taking that bend quite nicely. Okay, and hope that tape holds. We'll see. We may have to add tape there. Okay, and get this up here. Get this one tight. See if we can get that tight bend in there. Okay, rub that tape on. And now, <laughs> since we've used this tape and released it, I don't know if you can quite see what I'm doing. I'm rubbing it on with the handle of the scissors because we've, uh, otherwise, it's not going to hold. Okay, it does not work well to release tape. Usually when we release tape, take it off, reposition something. Um, 
We use a new piece of tape, but I didn't, it's too sticky. <laughs> too sticky now. <laughs> Remember, if you get the part of the tape that you're using to stick, if you get epoxy on it, that part's not going to stick. <laughs> it uh, won't stick with the epoxy on it. Okay, so don't handle the tape any more than you need to. Okay, this is, uh, <laughs> this is kind of amusing. It's not difficult, but it's kind of messy. <laughs> And you just have to live with it. It'll clean up though. Oh no! Here! See what we've got here. Don't do that. I don't know if you can see this far back clearly enough or not. Here, let me move forward. We got our tape underneath our edge. That's a mess. Okay. So, let's see if we can get... This one's the hardest one to get back. Again, we might have to use new tape here. We'll see. Ah. Okay, no, I think we're, oopsie, I think we're going to be good. Let's get all these tapes. Okay, now we're back in order here. Okay, and tape that tight, rub it on tight. I'm rubbing hard. This is not a, not a gentle rubbing to get this tape to stick. Because I don't want to come back half an hour from now and find that the tape has let go everywhere. And my sapile piece is on the loose. Okay, and as I go, see how I'm, uh, let me slide forward so you can see better. See how I'm, I, I started with the piece against the table to get a little support. But as I go, I'm lifting it up and I'm centering it as I go. I'm pushing the Sapili piece uh, down a little bit so it's centered on the piece of marine plywood. And I'll go back and check that when I get this last one on here. Okay, now you can skid it sideways a little bit where you need to so it's centered. You feel where it's centered and where it's not. You just hold both sides. You don't really have to look. Just um, squeeze the piece from both sides and you can feel if it's sticking out one side more than the other. So just push it with your fingers without even looking. Often your fingers are going to be more, you can feel things better than you can see them. Um, okay, that's pretty darn nice. And I think our tape is going to hold and everything. Now, um, we can do a little cleanup. Um, and then we'll leave it alone. So again, the business cards, good time for the business cards. We'll switch to one of our own cards here. And clean up right along the edge. If you're not quite tight in the curve, don't worry about it. Uh, just use some of the epoxy to fill in there. And it'll be absolutely fine. You really don't have to be tight against it in the curve. The epoxy's plenty strong. Hold it there. Okay. Now, um, I want to show you why we repositioned it there at the beginning. Um, if we hadn't, we could have, it would have been okay, but it wouldn't have looked quite as clean. Okay, cleaning off. Good. Okay, a little bit more. Okay, so at the back, this is, let's see if we can get that so you can see it well. You bring the camera up a little bit so you can see better. Okay. Up a little more. Okay, so this is where we repositioned it. We had the top down here, um, top edge down here further. So we slid the sapili up farther because the backrest is going to be like this. The backrest will, this is not the piece, but backrest will be like that. And now we have enough sapili sticking out that we can bevel the, we can sand the sapili so um, it has a perfect angle to meet the backrest without a break between the sapili and the backrest. So that will look, see how the sapili sticks out um, the, further than necessary for the backrest. So that will look a lot cleaner 
We have a lot of extra at the other end. We could have even stuck this up a little bit farther, but we would have more sanding to do um, later on. And as you know, I always try to avoid extra sanding. Um, okay. So if you were able to keep this piece neater, um, there'll be less sanding on it later on to get it clean again. But I'm guessing you're probably not a whole lot neater than I am. And so it probably got a little sticky. But it looks very nice. That's, that's going to be real pretty. Okay. And sanding will clean it up beautifully. So just cleaning off business card on the second side, cleaning off in the, right between the um, edge and the sapili. Of course we can't clean off where the tapes are, that's just a given. If you see a dry place in the joint any place, any place where it's not right tight with epoxy in it, in the joint, um, use some of the epoxy you're cleaning off to fill that area. You just don't want any large lumps of epoxy to have to sand off. It's, it takes too much work. It takes too long. It's a fast fill. We want to get this boat in the water. We don't want to spend a lot of time sanding. Okay, there, very nice. Very, very nice detail. Looking great. Okay, this is the back end, just so you, to orient you. This is the back end of this piece. That side is a bit. Um, this is the back end of the piece, and the back rest is right here, like that. Okay, thank you. Talk to you soon. Okay, we're almost through the second piece here. Um, and we're doing a slightly different technique. I want to show this, this to you, and either approach works fine. Uh, we coated it just the same as we did the first piece. But this piece we're holding on edge as we push the tapes on them. Finding that approach is perhaps slightly easier. Um, another problem here with taping me. Okay, this over. Okay, so standing it up on edge and then pulling the tape over and rubbing it on. Just a slightly different technique, but I think I prefer this method. Okay, and we're almost done here. And we'll have two beautiful splash rails. This time I remembered to position the strip correctly at the beginning and brought it up. You can see it comes up past the end here quite a bit and um, that will leave so when we um, bevel the end it'll mate perfectly with the made perfectly with the backrest. Okay, looking good, just have to clean it up, and we've got two beautiful splash guards with Sapili strips. Very nice. Okay, and the fronts, uh, the front ends, um, down here, uh, at this end, we'll cut off the excess after everything's set up, and then we'll bevel these ends so this piece and the other piece meet nicely. But um, we'll put them in place as we do that and fit them quite nicely so the two pieces fit together well. Okay, so again, just the business card cleaning off. Um, not a bad idea when you're cleaning it off. Uh, to, on these, we want as much holding power as possible. If you scrape right into the corner, you're taking out a lot of epoxy. So if you bevel, if you tip your business card just a little bit, uh, so it doesn't go right into the corner, you're gonna leave a little fillet there. And that's probably gonna be a good plan because it'll be a little bit stronger. And that way you can make sure that you won't end up with a dry joint. Okay, let's prop that up there. Okay, and then, leaving them on edge. We have edge rails, Sapili edge rails on top of each of our splash guards and they look really good and that'll stand up really nicely. We have them wedged so they're standing upright 
that's probably the best. If you lay them on their side, that'll push the rail sideways a little bit. So standing them up like that is good. And those will set up overnight. And here on the bow, we have the uh, attractive mahogany veneers, decorative veneers, all set up. I just wanted to show you, I think this angle will show things the best. Um, just wanted to show you the pins sequence there. Okay, and you can see the pins march right along every inch and a quarter all the way along the strips. Now, um, when you go to take those pins out after everything's set up, um, you don't want to pull them straight out. You want to grab them, grab a pin with the pliers, needle nose pliers, and twist it until it uh, breaks loose. As soon as you twist it, it'll uh, break loose. So you grab it, twist it, and then pull it out. If you just try to pull it out, it's very hard to pull out. And um, you might disturb the veneer a little bit. So twist and pull on the pins. And um, that's it. Very successful. Um, really looking good. So um, lots of fun here. And the only thing that's hard is waiting for the epoxy to set up. You want to keep going to the next step. You don't want to have to pause here. But well, that's pretty much all we can do now. Um, although there is one more little project that we can uh, finish up with if we're still have a little more time. And that's uh, this. I'll just show you what we're going to do. Um, that's here uh, on the backrest, these pieces. You can see um, with that close up how they're pretty fuzzy. This is a good time to clean these edges up. Um, on all three of them. So then we'll be ready to, um, after we put the splash guard in place, we'll be ready to glue the backrest in place. And that'll um, take a really nice curve when it fits in the boat. And we'll be through with our epoxy work pretty darn soon and on to um, onto the back deck, the film for the back deck. There'll be a couple of carbon fiber, a series of um, three carbon fiber tubes spanning the boat at the, across the back um, and then the film will go on the back deck on t you know after we put the carbon fiber tubes in place so um, anticipating that back here um, and that will go very quickly finishing that up and um, but before putting the back deck on we'll put the carbon fiber tubes in place but before putting the film on we'll do our varnish work and get the hull varnished on the outside and the front deck varnished on the on the top and um, then the last thing will be adding the hand holds at the front and the back um, the loops of nylon uh, at the front and the back of the boat so we're really closing the gap we're uh, going to be paddling soon okay i have pretty windy out there you can hear the wind vibrating things okay uh see you soon bye Okay, um, now we've pulled the tape off, and um, here you can see underneath the tape we get quite a bit of fill there. Um, there are a couple of ways to handle that. Uh, the, probably the easiest is to catch it while it's still um, partially cured. Uh, if you take the tape off too early, everything's going to fall apart, obviously. And this is not at all sticky, but I can gouge it with my thumbnail. It's still a little bit rubbery. So that gives us the option of using a, this is an Olfa knife, I think we've mentioned that before, Olfa. A uh, utility knife will work, but these are the best utility knife because you can put the blade out just a safe distance. You don't have to have it way out. And the blade is very secure because of the metal holder. So with it rubbery, with the epoxy rubber, you can't do this if it's cured up, if it's set up hard. Watch your fingers, don't slice your fingers. If you skid, you're going to cut yourself. Um, so you can cut right along the edge there, and then with a sharp chisel, you're going to be able to slice that off the wood carefully. You may not get it all off, but at least what's left will be fairly easy to sand. It's going to come right at you. Watch out. Close your eyes. There you go. Okay. 
And you see how easily that epoxy cuts in this green partially cured stage. If it's still sticky, you're doing it too soon, too early, and you're probably you may might have the whole thing fall apart, all your work lost. Okay, that'll sand out. I'll be able to sand that fairly easily. So let's try this one, see if we can do this one just right as well. You don't want to cut too deep because you'll cut right through all the epoxy holding the edge strip onto your splash guard. And then, of course, you're back to square one then. Oh, now be careful. You might catch the wood grain and start to lift the wood grain, depending on how the wood grain's oriented. The wood grain of the uh, plywood. And I just did right there just a little bit. So I'm going to back up and come. If you start to catch the wood grain, come at it from the opposite direction. So we'll go for this one here. And that's Okay, so you'll be able to see this. Okay. Don't hold it close, you're going to cut your fingers. And then, then with the chisel, just slice that right off there. The other um, alternative, if this is set up too hard or you're not finding this works for you, is, um, oh, of course you can leave them. Um, if you paint the splash, splash rail, which can look nice, then they won't show at all, and you don't really have to worry about them. Uh, the other alternative is to use uh, a uh, Dremel tool and come along the edge with um, some kind of sanding drum on the Dremel tool would be my first choice of, tool, of tools if you don't do it this way. Okay. It would be a little bit difficult to get in here with a sanding block and hand sanding it, but not not impossible, probably. Okay, so this that part will sand out. That'll we'll be able to just clean that up with sandpaper. Um, okay, here's a real classic one. Here, some of the others aren't as big as these initial ones, um, which makes it easier. And if it's really just small. Okay, can you see this one okay? Yeah, maybe you can. So, oh, I'm working at a funny angle here. It's a little hard for me to work smoothly like that. Okay, now I can hold it on the other side of the place I'm cutting. So you see this one here is the one I'm going to be working on. So I will just cut right along the edge of the wood. Trying to cut just down to the plywood, but not deeper. Okay. There's my cut. Now I'm going to move my hand because it's right in the way of the chisel. So I'll hold it back here. And these things seem obvious. It took me years to learn that every time I think I'll be careful and not cut myself, I would cut myself if I held it in such a way that I was cutting towards my hand. Okay, you see how nicely that comes off? This is just perfect. It's still cutting easily. But it's not at all sticky, it's just, you know, dry as can be. So, that's what your goal is. You see, this one is quite small here. So that won't, just these two bumps, that won't take much cleaning up at all. Okay, and then I'll come back on the other side, because the other side needs some cleaning up as well. Okay, um, see you soon. Uh, the key is catching this just at the right moment. Um, if it gets hard, you can't do this. It's, it just won't cut. you got to sand it off or leave it either way. Okay, um, another option possibly would be to fill in more evenly all the way along, but I like this best. Um, this is probably the easiest for you. Good evening. Uh, we've gotten uh, quite a bit of progress made since we last saw you, but nothing uh, complex or difficult. Um, mostly sanding. We did quite a bit of sanding, and you may wonder sometimes um, how some builders get such perfect epoxy work. Well, they probably don't get perfect epoxy work. They probably just use a lot of sandpaper. So sanding and, uh, and craftsmanship are sort of go together. If you're going to do really fine work, it takes a fair amount of sanding sometimes. And we try to minimize the sanding whenever we can, but um, it's worth it to do a nice job. So I want to show you the deck. That was the first sanding thing that we did. We pulled all the pins out of the uh, strips of veneer that we put on the middle, down the middle of the deck. And um, remember, just twist 
spin the pin in place, twisting it first, and then pull it out, it'll come out easily. And um, we sanded the veneer. I wouldn't use any power sanding on the deck. Um, I, I, that thin veneer, if you get a belt sander on it, it'll go right through the veneer and have to start again. So um, all hand sanding on the deck. Also the um, front deck is fairly thin uh, plywood as you noticed and it'll, uh, as you push on it, it'll curve down in the middle. So even a flat sanding, you can start with this flat sanding block, but even a flat sanding block really won't do it. So in the end you're going to be sanding with just your hand and a sheet of sandpaper folded in half. Um, on the bow deck, uh, let me show you that as I tell you how we did it. And it turned out just gorgeous. Um, really, really nice. And uh, look at that, isn't that nice? That w will finish off beautifully with varnish now. Um, very smooth surface now. It's sort of satiny smooth. We started with 120 grit sandpaper and then moved to 220 grit and that worked out fine. If you have some heavier epoxy bumps uh, on the where the pins were or something you could go over quickly with something more like 100 grit or even 80 grit but uh, don't be too aggressive with 80 grit. If you do, do use um, a coarser grit it goes faster but at that the first stage will go faster but then you'll spend more time sanding out the scratch marks from the coarser grit so sometimes it's faster and easier just to start with 120, 120 grit and um, rather than a coarser grit. Now one of the places I wanted to show you was right along in this uh, area here. Remember we filled that with epoxy and that came out quite nicely. It's um, kind of the deck slopes down and then the epoxy fill levels off right out of pretty much level with the top of the carbon fiber tube. It's slight, slightly uh, indented there. Um, that took a fair amount of sanding to get that really smooth where the thicker epoxy blended into the real thin deck epoxy and um, there were a few places where there were just minor uh, interruptions in the smoothness and we sanded those out and it looks really nice now. We also sanded along the edge of the boat a little bit here with the uh, 120 just to um, clean up the top edge of the fiberglass cloth where it came up because we hadn't finished that off yet. And then uh, we also found that we could sand quite nicely right in this groove here using the edge of sandpaper. If we took the, if we took the sandpaper and folded it in half, you can sand quite nicely right up in that edge there. So that worked out well. I think you can see that still, can't you? Yeah. So, um, so that worked out well. And then we... Um, Oh, before we sanded though, and this was important, in fact I started sanding to see if, I'm always seeing if I can skip steps, and usually you can't, and it's not, not really worth it because it just makes more work for yourself. Anyway, I started sanding before wiping it down, and the sandpaper was gumming up a lot, and um, so I wiped it down, you know, after about two swipes with sandpaper. Wiped it down, uh, I wiped it down with acetone, warm water will work fine too, that's to take off the amine blush. And it is important before varnishing, you need to have that amine blush off. If you don't get the amine blush off before varnishing, sometimes the varnish just doesn't want to set up and dry. So, um, important step there. Uh, I think that covers the deck pretty well. Um, sanding by hand, I was talking about that, because this dips down too much to sand with a block as you press on it. So you really need to be sanding by hand um, most of the surface. You can go over it with a block initially, but you're going to have to come back and do it by hand again. Okay, and um, then we can get back into what we're doing on the cockpit, and that's going really nicely. Uh, I haven't glued anything. I've just set it up so you can see how it's set up. Um, it takes a little time to set it up, so I didn't think you needed to see that whole process. Um, and it's a little fiddly if you have an extra hand at this point in the building, that's great, but um, you don't really need one. You can do it all by yourself. It's just going to slip around a little bit until you get it uh, firmed uh, in place. Um, the tape across the front is important. Oh, before the tape though, before we did anything, though we beveled the front um, two pieces where they come together. And let's take a look at that a little bit more closely so you can see that. Now that's... Um, 
we uh, used a protractor and a uh, bevel gauge actually and a protractor, whoops, and uh, check that angle. Um, I'm not sure if you can see that. Can you see that as well as every time I get in close, I get in the light. There you go. Now you can see it. Okay. And those angles on each side are beveled at 22 degrees. So um, 22 degrees is what you're aiming for. You don't want to change the angle of the front where it slopes. That angle is um, set correctly for you. But beveling the inside edge so they meet together nicely is an important step and that takes some craftsmanship, craftsmanship and skill to get it perfect. Um, although the epoxy will fill anything, it's just a cosmetic detail, it doesn't affect the strength at all. But it's nice to have it come together nice, you know, nicely. So 22 degrees, or another way to measure it is you leave the front edge, the outside edge of the plywood intact without changing this angle at all. And on the inside of the plywood, just draw a line that's 5 16 This is on, I'm showing you what should be on the inside. A line that's 5 16 of an inch back from the front edge and bevel from the, that line that's on the inside up to the front where the outside edge is not disturbed. And that will do, that'll get, that will give you the 22, and a half, 22 degrees of angle too. So 5 16 inch back on the inside or 22 degrees and use those as rough measurements to s initial measurements and then to get it um, fit perfectly you have to really fit it to your boat and uh, and make sure it lines up exactly right okay so that covers the front and then you can put the tape blue tape across the two pieces holding them together now things are still going to be a little sort of floating around and uh, hard to hold everything in place until you get some clamps in place um, before I did the clamps, so I found it helpful to put this uh, one of our strips of um, uh, nylon fabric across between the boats, taped on the out uh, across between the two sides of the boat, taped on the outside on each side with blue tape, and that let uh, me bring these cockpit combing pieces back so they could sit on that um, line of blue tape without falling down into the boat, and um, so that was one form of support that I thought was helpful. And then um, the clamps. These are these are ideal, these really big squeeze clamps. Um, these are almost almost 12, well that's about 11, 10 and a half or 11 inches long, these squeeze clamps. And uh, then we have this more standard size back here. That's kind of convenient. Um, if you have those or if you, you know, once you get those, I, I got those, I can't remember where I got them, and I thought, gee, wonder if I'll ever use these. Now I use them all the time. So that's been quite a nice tool to have. It might be a nice tool to add to your collection. Um, you could use a uh, C-clamp if you have one that's a deep enough throat with a little pad on the outside and maybe a pad on the inside, a little shim of plywood to keep it from digging into the kayak side. Um, that would work fine. The other way to do it is to just use a squeeze clamp like this, a more normal size squeeze clamp, and put it on, you can't have the seat in place is the only thing, put it on at the back holding this back edge in. Now what we've done with the squeeze clamps is um, we've used them to hold the cockpit combing forwards. We've forced it forwards enough that it's taking this bow out towards the sides of the boat where it's supposed to meet here. It doesn't quite push out by itself, but it's in place pretty close. You can see there's a bit more of a gap there than we'll want right in through along here. That's about a quarter of an inch gap there. But um, it gets it relatively well in place and then we'll come back with the um, CA glue and put a couple of spot welds along there that hold it up tight. Okay, just so I don't forget, um, I will go back and look at the seat arrangement in a minute here, and the back of the back rest. Um, but I do want to go back up here to the front and point out one more thing. Now, when you're inevitably with a kayak, you get a, you know a little bit of water in it sometime. And um, when you're dumping a boat, it's real frustrating if you tip, you basically you tip the boat upside down, tip one end down, in this case the bow down, and then with the boat 
exactly up, upside down, you tip the bow up and the water all runs down the center line of the boat and out here and is gone. However, if we stick our cockpit combing down too far here in the front, it's going to block that water and it won't drain nicely. So I've got it so the cockpit combing underneath, right underneath the deck, the bottom edge of the combing, right under there, is just barely, maybe an eighth of an inch, sticking down below the deck. Now, that's, uh, that eighth of an inch even might be a little irritating. So I'll probably take a round file after I glue it all up and maybe just put a little groove in there so it's not even an eighth of an inch. But I think it, it, it's, if you try to get it exactly lined up perfectly, it's going to want to tend to want to pop up out of the top and it's a little harder to handle that way. You can line it up pretty closely though. So I would not have it sticking down half an inch or something there. Also it makes your combing so it's not as high. You get more water in the cockpit if you're going through a lot of waves and stuff. So um, just barely sticking out below the bottom. A little less than an eighth of an inch. Probably more like a sixteenth proud on the bottom side beneath the bottom, uh, bottom surface of the deck. Okay, now coming back. Uh, oh, um, let's see. I think you saw us glue up these rails. That went smoothly, just taping them in place and with the glue. Um, the important part there was making sure that we had uh, the top edge of the plywood saturated with epoxy as the first step before we started to glue the rails on. Once you saturate edge grain in plywood, it glues really nicely. Okay, um, now let's go back and look what we've done towards farther back here. Now, this, the backrest of the seat is in place. But as soon as you put the backrest in place, you can see it's curved. The curve is held in place by the uh, tension between the sides. But the, um, cur the backrest is stiff enough that when it's curved and push it, pushed down in place between the two uh, sides of the kayak, it springs the sides apart. So to avoid that happening, you need a system to hold the sides together. And I'll show you what we've done here. Um, and let me try from back here. Okay, there you can see it better. See the uh, orange bar clamp going across? Here's one end, and this is the bar clamp going across here, and here's the other end, and the handle for tightening it. Okay, so the bar clamp, and I put a pad of plywood under each end so we don't dent the cedar, which is a fairly soft wood. Um, with the clamp and a pad on the other end as well. So if you have a longer bar clamp like that, again, it's a great tool. This is a Jorgensen bar clamp. They are a little bit more expensive than the Chinese ones, but boy, the Chinese ones are super hard to use. They just don't work very well. Um, they look similar, but they don't work very well. So this is a real Jorgensen uh, from Sweden, I believe and it's worth paying a little bit extra for a clamp that works. It doesn't walk when you tighten it up. Um, it just stays still. Uh, on the Chinese ones, um, they tend to walk along the surface as you tighten the handle, and um, that's very awkward. Anyway, the Chinese one will work on this, but uh, it's, nice. it's nice to have good tools. Um, if you don't want to indulge in getting a clamp, there is another system that will work just as well. And that's using a cord. That's using a cord to uh, pull the boat together. And um, so you just want to take your cord. This would be you'd want to do this up where I've got the clamp. But um, I want to show you back here farther, so uh, so I don't have to take my clamp off and stuff. So you could use a heavy cord, wrap it around the boat. And this would this would be right up behind the seat and um, wrap it around the boat and then tie it so it's loose initially but then use a twisting tool to twist and tension the cord and that's kind of an old older system of tightening things up when you want to tighten uh, tighten something up around a surface okay so just tie your cord fairly loose here so you can get a couple of twists in. This may be too loose, but let's see. Okay, and then take a dowel or something that's not too flimsy and start twisting it. I think I should have started a little bit tighter, but this this would work. 
Um, you can see you can get a lot of tension. See how the sides are coming in there? Um, you know, I'm not right in the right place, am I? There, you, the sides are actually springing in quite a bit as I tension that. And then you just take it and um, either you can use tape or you can tie it. Or if you can get it far enough, you can sometimes hook it right under the cord itself. Uh, I think in this case I would tape it right here and that would hold the sides together really just as well as the bar clamp. You can see we're pulling the sides in quite a bit there. Okay, so a um, couple of systems there that will work fine if you don't, but the bar clamp is nice. You'll, another tool that you'll find, you think, oh, I'm not going to buy a tool just for this one use, but once you have it you'll find that you'll use it a lot. It's very convenient. Good for gluing chairs together or anything like that. Okay, um, so there we've got it. These two clamps are just pushing the seat back up, um, holding the seat back in place up against its, uh, you know, the combing here. And this clamp here on top is just holding the laminates of the seat together. They're not glued together yet. We'll do that uh, a little bit later. And then the last piece is this piece here, which is the seat, the start of the back deck. It's a piece of plywood, start of the back deck, and supports the seat. And you can see when we pull the boat together just the right amount, the curve of the seat is flexed back and fits exactly with the curve in this piece of plywood here. Now if you want to be um, fancy, it's really quite nice and it's a good idea, in fact, to bevel this piece, the front edge of this piece, right along here, so it matches the angle of the seat. Because if you don't bevel it, you're going to have a gap on the bottom side. Um, a gap on the bottom isn't all that convenient because it's hard to fill that gap with epoxy from below. Not impossible, but it's a little harder. So um, in this case, it's really quite nice to bevel the front edge of this back deck piece so it me meets the angle of the seat. Okay, now we've got this all mocked up and it looks great. Everything's fitting really nicely. Um, the sides, uh, the, the side of the seat pieces has a little notch that sits right on, let's zoom in on that because this is important, has a little notch that sits right on that, there we go, you can see my scrappy piece of uh, wood that I used as a pad, but what we're looking at is right here where the seat back flares out just a little bit and then has a notch that sits right on the carbon fiber tube, so that positions it. And you want to make sure the seat's all the way down, so that notch is notched, um, placed sitting right on the carbon fiber tube. Okay, now, how are we going to make all this uh, permanent and stay in place? Well, oh, uh, before we get to that, um, <laughs> notice how this piece that we glued on top was sticking out, and now we've cut it so it's lined up exactly right with the back edge of the plywood on the combing. Um, and so that's going to fare right, and, you know, that'll tie right into the back of the seat really nicely. Okay, so now we've got all this in place, how are we going to get it uh, permanently attached? Um, well, we can't do it all at once because the seat isn't laminated. We can't laminate the seat because then it'll be really stiff and won't bend to fit in. So we can't take it off the boat and laminate it. We need to laminate the seat in place. But um, if we laminate the seat in place first, then um, we haven't got this uh, combing really very firmly attached. When we pull it out to the side here, that's going to change some things. It's going to change, um, you know, some things back in this area. So. Um, we want to firm up the first part. We don't want to glue the combing in place all the way back to the seat though because we want to be able to adjust this angle here after the seat's in place and um, laminated together. So we're going to glue the combing in place back to right about here because you can see that it doesn't change much in front of this point and this point is right where the, the very tip back edge of the front deck comes to an end right here. So we'll glue the combing permanently in place right back to this point and then we'll take the seat back off, we'll put all the epoxy in between the layers of the seat and we'll put it back in place and um, 
with its proper curve and everything and let that set up and then we'll do the final glue up where we're gluing the last bit of the combing onto the side of the boat and gluing the combing with a nice fillet, thick fillet here between the combing and the seat pack and gluing the um, uh, back deck piece in place and attaching it to the seat. So that's kind of the overall picture of what we'll be doing. Oh, one last point. Um, you probably saw it and wondered about it or understood it either way. But one last point is this lashing here behind the seat. That's critical. Okay, and that's just a piece of cord. And that's tying the seat, the middle of the seat, back tight against the back deck so it holds that proper curve. Um, without that cord in place there, the seat won't take its proper, sh the seat back won't take its proper shape. Um, and the seat, oh, you may be wondering about the seat. The seat itself is that um, very thick block of ethafoam uh, and it's covered with a, the blue umbrella. usually is what we use. So that sits right on the bottom of the boat, right on top of the Kevlar and then you lean back against the seat back and it's a very comfortable, very comfortable way to make the seat very strong and everything because your weight is carried by the bottom of the boat. Okay, so that um, will give you a little bit of foresight into what we're about to do. Okay, so tonight we're going to be working on the combing and get that firmly attached back to our clamps and we'll start with um, some of uh, the CA to hold it in place and then we'll progress to epoxy and we'll be using a fillet, an epoxy fillet on the outside, a fairly uh, clean tight fillet on the outside and then we'll also be doing a fillet up underneath the deck um, on the inside at the front, remember the inside part is lined up where you want to drain the boat with the water rushing down the upside down on the deck and coming out the cockpit. Uh, that's pretty well lined up there, maybe it's just a sixteenth of an inch proud. But um, as we move back along the sides of the boat, back in this area here and here, um, now we have about, about a quarter of an inch, three-eighths of an inch um, of the combing sticking down below the deck and that gives us um, the chance to do a fillet on the inside. So um, the combing in this area is sticking down below the surface of the deck about three-eighths of an inch and that gives us a chance to do a, to do a uh, quite solid fillet on the inside underneath behind the combing as well as a small tight fillet on the outside so that'll be very strong when we finish that. Okay. So let's get to work on this. We'll start with the CA. Let's get this positioned right back here. We want about a quarter of an inch of overlap between the combing and the boat. So in this case I have to push the combing down just a little bit more. Okay, that should be about right. And on the other side I think we're, yeah, we're just about right there. So the combing should come down at least as far as the bottom edge of the carbon fiber tube. So you have enough of an overlap that you get a good joint there. Okay, and now we're ready for the CA. And, uh, accelerator and CA. And... I'm gonna pay her, uh, remember I put a nail in the top of this um, after the... There's a, actually a, a steel pin at the top of the cap usually when you get it and that works uh, to seal it up until that um, gets too too much epoxy, uh, too much CA on it and um, stops working so then a nail works well. I'll just take the nail out with the pliers there and we're ready to go. Okay, check your bow again. Make sure that's right. Let's get this bow secured first. So just a dot of super glue right up here at the front to keep those two rails lined up. Now we're going to move back and um, we can come back almost a foot. Let's try that coming back that far and see if that works for us. And we'll try a dot right in here. We're asking a lot of this super glue to hold it coming back this far, but we'll see if that'll work. If it lets go, we'll just 
go a little farther forwards with the next batch, next bit. Okay, and that's a pretty small dot. Let's try that though. This is going to be <laughs> quite a lot of, we'll see if the holding power of the super glue is up to this task right here. Otherwise we'll have to put more frequent um, dots on, which is fine too. Okay, it's starting to look like it's more or less set. That'll hold. Okay, and then we're going to come back about another eight inches here. Let's see if you can see that. Um, so, uh, another dot, and the first one is holding, so if we're good so far. Looks like we'll need one more back in here. We're quite tight farther back. Um, so, doing well here. I think you're in your own light here. There we go. Okay. So we'll need one more right around here. There's a bit of a little gap there. Very small, but very little. And we're tight back here, so that'll be fine back there. Now we'll just do the same on the opposite side. And um, then we'll come back and show you the epoxy. Now if you needed to make more more of these little tabs, that's fine, not a problem at all. But on this side, I was able to just do three of them, and that worked out quite well. So that may be enough for you. Um, okay, that's done. So um, we were able to, and we're quite tight here. We might add one right here, actually. Yeah, I think we'll add one more up here. There's a bit of a gap way up here. Um, so check and see if you have a gap anywhere. Um, just put another little teensy drop of uh, CA and uh, close that gap, pull it, pull it together. Okay, really very little, just a couple, just a drop or two. Okay, so now we have four. So we did do a bit more of a space here at the front than uh, we were able to get away with. Okay, and then when that's set, go back up to the very front and check, there we go, check here again. Yeah, that feels good. We're just proud by just a teensy little bit, a sixteenth of an inch or so. Okay, and we're good at the back. We still have our overlap at the back. That's important. Um, back right in here, we're still overlapped by the thickness of the carbon fiber tube on the inside. There, the combing uh, extending down below the side of the boat there. That's important for that joint. So um, we're looking real good. We'll go and do the other side, just the same as we did this side, the four drops, drops of CA. And then I'll be back and we'll do an epoxy fillet along there. We'll clear coat first in the um, groove and then we'll do a real nice, clean, tight fillet because that uh, this is a fillet that shows. So we'll want to make it, make it especially nice. Okay, see you in a minute. Um, so I mixed up three large marks of clear resin with three small marks of hardener. And it's still only about 46 degrees here in my shop, uh, unheated. And um, so I heated this uh, mixture up over a light bulb, a 100 watt light bulb with the tin sitting right on the light bulb for a few minutes. Well, probably about two minutes probably while I stirred it until it's a little bit more liquid because I want it to saturate the wood. and. Um, now I'm not going to go all the way up. It's going to be easier to varnish this than to have epoxy and then varnish. Um, varnish is just a faster process. You have to put more coats on, but it sands easier. So, um, so I'm just going to go up about half an inch as I go along here. Um, the, the, just a little bit higher than where I expect the fillet to be. Okay, and this doesn't really want to be very thick. Um, but you do want to saturate the wood thoroughly. So just the width of the brush right down the center works just right. Remember, if you leave anything that's going to drip or run or something, you'll have to sand. So we've done plenty of sanding now, so let's try to keep it clean. But you do want enough to get down and saturate the edge of the deck plywood. So you're not trying to do a real dry job, you're just trying to take off the excess. But you do want some to sink down between the two pieces of wood and get the edge of the deck plywood well coated. So don't be too dry here. 
um, put it on moderately heavily and then brush it along so you get it sinking down between the pieces but then you take off the excess. This will blend fairly well with the varnish um, not always perfectly but usually pretty well especially if your epoxy if your epoxy is kind of thick when you do this it won't blend as well with the varnish but if your epoxy is fairly thin it'll saturate the wood in a comparable way to the varnish and turn the wood the same color so that's another reason for heating your varnish if you're working in a cold shop okay so right back to the corner where the edge of the deck ends and I'll show you that right there okay See that? Yeah, right here is where the edge of the deck ends. Okay, so we'll go right back to there. Okay. And then we'll stop. We'll get and we'll finish that later after this is set up and after we've got our seat all glued together. And um, now I'm gonna leave the front tape in place. I'm gonna put epoxy at the top of the joint here and fill that between the two pieces. Hopefully it'll sink down in between those pieces. I think it will. Okay, so I'll fill that. I'm gonna wipe that off cleaner here in a minute after it sinks in. Um, but I'm gonna leave the tape and I'm not, I'm gonna, well, let's see, I'd like to put my fillet all the way forwards. Let's see if we can take that tape off and uh, allow room for the fillet. I'm gonna take a narrow piece of tape Okay, so here's our wide tape. We're up at the front, up at the front of the boat now, up here, yeah. Okay, and we're talking about the tape that holds those two halves of the combing together there. You can see the edge of the blue there. So that's uh, down where our fillet wants to be. It's hard to do a fillet and later on add to the fillet, run it further forwards and have them join each other in a graceful way. So I'm cutting a narrow piece of tape here and I'm going to replace the wide piece of tape up here and hopefully keep everything from flying apart during the process. Okay. And let's see. You have to angle the tape so it doesn't go too far down on the other side too. Okay. Now we can keep coming forwards here where our fillet will be and up the front a little bit, up the stem okay okay so we're going to be doing the same on the other side but um, let's finish with this side and we'll get up underneath on this side, you're not going to be able to see it but I, what I'm doing is oh now um, <laughs> Maybe you thought of this yourself, which would be great, because uh, I've already done this. Um, and you could still do it at this point, but hopefully you're watching this video several steps ahead and, and catching up, okay, putting all these notes together. Um, it's important, remember we coated the bottom side of the deck with epoxy. It's important, if you haven't done it yet, that you wipe the bottom side down where we're going to be doing this uh, fillet here with um, acetone or, or if you have enough time for it to dry with water but if we're doing it right uh, just before we put on the epoxy you'd have to use acetone which dries almost instantly so I've already done that on the bottom side of the deck all along on the underneath side of the deck all along this area here and here because I know I want a good joint there a good bond and if you have the amine blush on there you won't have a good bond and now if you want to put something inside there because otherwise uh, we're going to drip on the boat for sure and then we'll have a lot of cleaning up to do. So let's get some paper towel down in there. Uh, remember if you use paper towel like I'm doing you're going to want to move that paper towel after you get the drips on it because um, otherwise it'll glue itself onto the boat. Okay, welcome back. Actually I can talk to you this way. Um, Tonight we'll have a bit of a walking tour around the cockpit area and I'll show you what we've gotten done and what we're going to try to get done tonight. 
And this is exciting. This is the last major glue up of the uh, boat. Uh, a few other small things, but this is the last big uh, epoxy work. So um, let's hope it all goes smoothly. I'm sure it will though. Uh, now that we're so experienced with uh, working with this remarkable material. Um, okay, let's start with what we did last night and review that and how that went. We um, were working on the fillet uh, around the cockpit combing. And if you recall, uh, I started with a fillet that had phenolic in it. And I got that spread on one side and stepped back and looked at it. And I said, no, I don't like that color. So I um, took that epoxy off. This is, this is the advantage of working in a cooler, uh, cooler workshop. If it's real warm, you don't have these options. Um, but I scraped all of that epoxy off with the phenolic in it. I didn't waste it though. I used it on the inside, um, up underneath, behind the combing, back in this area here and um, spread that so that was uh, well used and then I mixed up a batch in a new container so I wouldn't have the pink phenolic in it I mixed up a batch in a new container with just the silica and um, I'm much happier with that effect and actually as we uh, apply varnish the white of the silica will start to turn more of an amber color because the varnish um, has an amber tint to it. So uh, that'll look really nice, I think. Now, um, a couple of details here. Uh, one, I said I wasn't going to use a mirror underneath here. Well, as soon as I said that, I thought, oh, gosh, well, that's really lazy. And um, with a mirror, I'll be able to do a much better job. And indeed, I got a small mirror, which I had in the other building, and used it back behind there. In fact, I can get that mirror and show you how well that worked. And then you can check my work, see how you like it. See how I did up underneath. So here's my mirror. A little dusty there, okay. Should be a bit better. Okay, and let's see if we can get that aimed right. Okay, let's see, it's a little bit tricky with the camera and the mirror. But there, if you're seeing, let's zoom in maybe, see if that works. There, you're seeing up in the mirror, you're seeing up underneath. And you can see we've got a fairly good fill all along there, fairly even. And initially when I checked, there were some gaps. There were some places that hadn't been filled so nicely. Okay, so what you're seeing in the mirror is up. Oh, you're seeing the camera too. Well, you can see my head, a bit of my forehead too. Uh, this is tricky, tricky filming here. I'm afraid this isn't very, isn't as professional as a Lucas film, but anyway. Oh, now it's focusing, it recognizes I'm a person, it wants to focus on my face. Okay, well anyway, uh, that gives you the idea, um, a little bit of the idea. And so the mirror, the mirror was very helpful and allowed me to do a much better job up there. Another thing that helped a lot was um, I placed the, uh, the epoxy with a brush, and then I used... Here we go. At the talk, I seem to wander with the camera. Sorry about that. Um, so I placed the epoxy with the brush, and then I used the squeegee, pulling the epoxy back along the deck and right into that corner there. So pulling it back like this. And um, that worked quite nicely. And then I used a brush uh, up underneath to finish it off. And when I used the mirror and saw a few little gaps in there, some were almost one inch long gaps up behind. Then I used a brush with epoxy on the brush to fill in. And so we got quite a nice consistent fillet on the backside up underneath. And I can feel it now with my hand running it along there. And it's quite nice, quite smooth. Um, I did do one other thing on that fillet. While the epoxy, the epoxy gets to a point where it's no longer sticky, but it is um, still flexible. It's sort of, sort of pre-rubbery. It's not quite to the rubbery stage, but you can touch it and not get stuck into it. And um, at that point, I felt along there, and there were a couple of um, bumps, not sharp barbs, but little lumps 
that I was able to, just with my finger, push back up into the epoxy and smooth out the surface by pushing on it with my finger with the glove on. So, um, so that's a bit of a trick. If you catch the epoxy just at the right moment, you can mold it sort of like clay um, to a certain extent. Um, you don't want to do extensive work that way, but you can certainly take out a few bumps here and there. Okay, so that's um, how we did the hidden part up underneath. And it is nice to have that smooth. You don't really, you know, any really sharp bumps or anything will catch dirt. Um, you might, uh, depending on where they are, you might scrape your leg on it or something like that. So, or if it's really sharp, if you reach under there, you might catch your hand on it. Of course, you can sand afterwards, but uh, underneath there to take off any sharp barbs, but um, it's easier not to have to do that. The other thing is, if the epoxy is mixed right, it won't leave sharp barbs. If it's too dry and um, pasty, uh, it's very hard not to get sharp barbs sticking off of the epoxy, because every time you touch it, you pull a barb down with the brush, and um, it's hard to get rid of those. So having a creamy, smooth mixture is part of the trick. Okay, now on the outside, oh, one more thing. Let me show you up. This is going to be hard to see. There, no, you can see that well. Uh, you can see right between the two halves of the combing where they join in the middle. I've done a nice little fillet, nice tight little fillet there with um, the brush and cleaned up on the sides. So that looks pretty neat in there. And then on the outside, Look how nice that fillet looks now. Well, I wasn't incredibly pleased with my fillet. Um, I've done better fillets uh, at times. But the point was that I had enough epoxy in there and I had basically the right shape. The surface was not absolutely smooth or perfect. Um, if you do a perfect fillet, you can leave it if it turns out absolutely perfect. But the chances are it won't. Um, it's very hard to do absolutely perfect fillets that are exactly even and smooth like this. So um, there the trick is to make it perfect by sanding. Um, the silica epoxy is tough to sand when it sets up really hard. Uh, the silica is just as hard a material as the stuff they put on the sandpaper to cut, uh, to cut through what you're sanding. So it's hard to sand if you let it set up completely. The trick is to catch it if you can. You can sand it when it's set up. Um, it just takes a lot longer. The trick is to catch it when it's past the rubbery stage, but not super hard. If it's still rubbery, it's not going to sand. It just kind of mushes around and pulls and it makes a mess. So don't try to sand it too early if it's... Um, you'll disturb the fillet surface and maybe even pull the epoxy away from the wood or something. It'd just be a mess. Um, and it just kind of gums around. It just kind of scooches around and doesn't really come off. You can't really sand it off. Um, the next stage is you're sanding it and you get sort of little rolls of epoxy coming off. Little, It's not dust exactly, but little rolls of epoxy coming off. That's okay. That works okay. Um, and then when it gets a little bit harder, you'll start getting sanding dust like you'd normally expect with sandpaper. The little trick that we used on sanding the uh, fillet and getting it real smooth, getting it as beautiful as it is, was I took a piece of, uh, just a piece of, um, I guess this is sapili here, and um, it was just square, but I beveled one edge to a round. So um, you can see that bottom edge, see if I can get it so you can see it, is a round curve. Um, and this piece of sapele is about half an inch thick and I beveled the round curve and then that fit right in there nicely and um, with the sandpaper of course on the curve and so I was holding the sandpaper like so and sanding back and forth like this. Now I don't want to do it now because I've sanded this down to 120, uh, but this is, a, this is an 80 grit, it's purple. Um, and that worked really quite nicely. It cut fairly quickly and made the job go faster. And then after that, I sanded with 120 grit and then 220 grit. So I don't really want to sand now with 80 grit or else I'll have to go back all through the grits again. But that worked quite nicely, just holding the sandpaper onto the, onto the block like this. The reason for holding it, the, the reason I like to hold it instead of gluing it on, 
is the sandpaper does wear out and gum up fairly quickly. And when you're holding it, you can just keep sliding it to a new, to a new part of the sandpaper. So you're not using old paper that's uh, gummed up or um, dull. Remember, the sandpaper gets dull as well as gummed up. If it's just because it's not gummed up, doesn't mean it's still cutting very well. So use plenty of. Um, don't keep using the same old worn out tired sandpaper time after time. Use plenty of new sandpaper. It makes your life so much easier and that makes sanding actually almost fun uh, because it goes quickly. Okay, I think that's all the tricks that you need to know. A little bit of epoxy, clear epoxy fill right on the top here, right where the two sapili strips come together. And that was, um, I did that while the epoxy was still fairly liquid so it would wick in between the two. And um, Let's see, did I fill from the front? No, I think I just used clear epoxy from the back and again did it while the epoxy, the clear epoxy was fairly liquid so it would wick through between these two pieces where the combing joins. And I think it did, I think we have epoxy all the way to the front edge there. And then the fill in behind afterwards. Okay, so I think that covers it pretty well. A lot of sanding involved, um, but it sure looks nice. Now one of the things to remember when you're sanding is that um, the, uh, the varnish, uh, I think people are used to painting and paint does cover things up. Varnish doesn't cover things up. Varnish accentuates anything that you were hoping uh, wouldn't show because it's a gloss uh, surface and um, any little variation in the surface will be reflected as a blemish. So um, you really want to get this sanded smooth uh, if you're going to have it varnish and varnished and look really clean and, and uh, nice. So you can see that's a very smooth, very smooth surface where the fillet just f blends beautifully into the wood surface. Um, there's no sharp ridge where the fillet ends, no sharp ridges on the, no ridges on the fillet. It's all just perfectly smooth. Okay, so I think that covers what we were doing last night. Now let's look at tonight's work. Um, we've moved our spring clamps uh, back. They were up here originally, right in this area. We've moved them back um, quite a bit farther. And uh, then we've um, used a series of other clamps. And we'll go over what each one is doing. And there are different ways to clamp things and different ways to hold them in place. Um, one is using the CA to hold things. Um, but you want to mock this up first and make sure it's staying still. Also, remember that epoxy is a very, like a lubricant when it's, before it sets up, it's very slippery stuff. And um, <clears throat> if your pieces aren't staying in place now, um, when they're coated with epoxy, they'll be even more inclined to slide out of place. So try to get things mocked up in such a way using whatever clamps you think are appropriate that you have, um, so everything stays, will stay in position. Okay, so, um, we have these clamps are holding the back of the combing. There we go. The back of the combing to the back to the seat back. That's important. Otherwise, the combing wants to uh, pull out away from the edge of the seat. And um, then this clamp actually isn't doing anything now. I can take it out of the mix. Um, then we have the bar clamp still holding the two sides of the boat together. One advantage of the bar clamp instead of the rope here, but any, there are other ways to do that. We could just put a piece of wood. See, the bar goes across here, and um, that gives us a nice flat surface. The bar is down all the way against the touching the um, carbon fiber tube on the edge. We, if we used the rope, we could just substitute a piece of wood running across here, and that would work fine too. Um, as a flat surface, a stiff enough piece of wood that it doesn't bend down. Because we're going to use that bar here, or the piece of wood either way, to pull this back deck piece up. It tends to want to deflect down a little bit um, because of the forces here. So this clamp is pulling the deck piece up exactly flat against the bottom of the bar. Um, oh, here's the weight. Well, this side, the back, back of the uh, seat wanted to pull up. Every time we put this clamp on, the seat would back would pull up. So this weight is just enough to keep the seat back down in position. And remember the seat back has these little notches. Let's see if we can get zoomed in on that. There. 
see the notch that sits here flares out and then the notch sits right on the carbon fiber tube there and so you need that to be down all the way on both sides or else your seat will be seat back will be kind of lopsided okay oh another thing um, quite a bit more light in here tonight because we needed to light both sides so we have a lot of light coming from the front and a lot of light from the back because we'll be working in both areas one of the big rules about craftsmanship is never work in the dark and never work in a poorly lit area and expect it to turn out well because it'll look okay and then when you get it out in the sunlight or in a brighter light you'll see how how flawed it is um, you just you need light to see so if you're trying to do work in the poorly lit area um, it's just not going to turn out well so take the time to get a uh, light on it you know and I rigged uh, several extra lights tonight um, this one up here a spotlight shining right down on the work and then a couple of hundred watt bulbs here shining down on the work and those are from the back and then there are two spotlights up here shining down on the work so a lot of good light um, is very helpful and it's always a mistake never look at your workmanship more closely after the epoxy set up than you did while you were laying it up always look at it more closely while you're laying it up in better light and uh, less closely after you've finished and can't do anything about it um, that'll make you happy with your work and it'll turn out really really well okay so um, we still have our string tying the back of the seat pulling the back of the seat back against the um, little short piece of back deck there and um, I think that pretty much covers it the other side is pretty much the same and again, this clamp isn't really doing anything, so let's get it out of the way now, out of the mix. And we'll keep those clamps standing by in case we need them. The last thing that we'll be doing is we'll be using a little few, a uh, handful of little paper clamps on the uh, seat back, squeezing the sides together. Any place we see there might be a gap. So we'll be putting those, we'll have a dozen of those um, that we can use wherever we think might be helpful probably along the bottom edge we'll put a couple of those along the bottom edge make sure that's squeezed tight together so we don't have voids when we laminate the seat back okay um, ready to start I think we've got our program sort of sketched out there pretty well and um, we're ready to mix epoxy so we'll start on the seat back I'm going to take this apart and um, we'll get the epoxy on the seat back this is going to be a good time for gloves um, this is going to be a little sticky uh, because we'll have epoxy squeezing out from between the layers of the seat back as we work. Now you could break this up into several sessions. Um, that's not impossible. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just do it because um, I think it's easier just to do it all together. But if you want to break it into several sections, the first step would be gluing up the three layers of the seat back. Oh, and let me just comment. Um, the three layers, there are two layers that have veneer running the same way on the outside, and one layer that has veneer running the other way. You can see, um, well, and it doesn't matter um, whether your veneer is running vertically or horizontally on the front and back. Um, just put the layer that is different in the middle so the layer that has the veneer running the opposite direction from the other two put it as the center piece the middle piece of the sandwich okay and then you'll have a very very strong seat back seat back okay um, I think that covers things pretty well so we're going to go ahead and mix up epoxy let's start with I think if we start with four Oh, um, we were talking about if we want to break this into several sessions, two sessions, um, you could laminate the seat back first. You have to have it in place or else you won't have the right curve. You can't laminate it up and then put it in place uh, unless you build a fairly complicated jig. But I think it's better to have it in place, even if, uh, better than a jig, because then it can really conform to the boat. And it's not going to be very bendable once it's laminated up. However, if you're going to do it in place, make sure you use a little saran wrap or you, you can use packaging tape but saran wrap is probably better or some sort of plastic 
over the edge of the boat and down on the inside so the seat does not glue itself into the boat um, when you're not ready if you're not doing the whole project. But we're going to do the whole project so we don't want plastic here because we want the seat to glue itself into the boat. So we'll have a lot of, um, you know, we'll be using the advantage of having wet epoxy against wet epoxy. Okay, I'm just seeing a little fuzz along the back edge of the seat here. It's probably going to be easiest if I sand that off before I get uh, things, all that fuzz coated with epoxy. It'll sand off a lot easier as wood fuzz rather than as epoxy coated uh, wood fuzz. So I'll clean up the back of the seat just a little bit more and we'll have to take off all these things but remember <clears throat> remember how you did it, how you had it rigged up and don't forget any of the crucial pieces to the puzzle. Um, okay, so I'm going to mix up uh, four clear epoxy and then I'll be back with you and we'll get this going. Sorry for so much talking, usually we're we're actually getting something done, not just talking, but um, the key to this going really smoothly is preparation on this step. So I wanted you to see exactly how we had set it up and, um, and uh, so you would have the advantage of seeing in advance and mocking it up, understanding how important it is to mock it up before you start uh, getting epoxy on things. Okay, see you in a minute. Okay, just a quick note here. Uh, we're getting ready to spread epoxy with a squeegee, and um, I want to show you how you can uh, reuse your squeegees. You want to, you don't ever want to throw a squeegee away. Um, so you just peel the epoxy off there. Just bend the squeegee and the epoxy, especially if it's a thicker coating. If it's a real thin coating of epoxy, it's harder to get off. But if it's a slightly thicker coating of epoxy, it just pops right off, and you peel it back and. There's your squeegee clean on that side. Oh, this is a thinner coating on this side. Um, anyway, the epoxy won't stick to the squeegee. Um, so that's the point. And then, after you have the epoxy off, if you still have a nice clean straight edge with no nicks or dings in it, that's great. But if you've got a few, um, if your edge is not perfect, then just clean it up. Let's see, here's some sandpaper over here on our drill table. You got your sandpaper, you find a flat surface. Maybe this will work if you can still see. And just take your squeegee and at different angles just rub it on a piece of two, piece of 220 grit sandpaper. Okay, and there you have a perfect edge again um, on your squeegee. Uh, whoops, there you go. Perfect edge again on your squeegee. So, um, very easy to keep using the same squeegee. Okay, just wanted to show you that little trick there, and we'll be back here in a couple minutes. Okay, <laughs> another little sequence on tool management. Um, I think we had we started we had trimmed brushes already, but this is how the brush comes in your kit, and um, it's really too long. The bristles are too long, and they're too floppy, and they don't work quite right with they absorb too much epoxy. It's just a mess. So um, you want to trim your brushes. The best way to trim them is, I think I can do this with gloves on, uh, squeeze the bristles like so. Uh, so I'm grabbing them, I'm going to trim about half the bristle off, squeeze it tight, and then, oh, I'm going to cut my gloves, and then trim across the end, trying to keep a square end. If you get sort of a too erratic or chopped an end, it doesn't work very well. Okay. That's a little bit beveled, but that'll work since it's a straight cut. Let's just clean that up a little bit. There, there. If you don't squeeze the bristles together, it's really hard to get a straight cut. Okay, beveled cut's okay. I'd rather have it square, but anyway, beveled is okay. I'll do better on the next one. Okay, we are ready to start spreading epoxy. Okay. Yeah, I suppose you can see me and the work surface. Um, Mixed up four clear and stirred it thoroughly with four large marks of resin with four small marks of hardener. And we just want to get this on here quickly. Oh, forgot to sand our fuzz off. Let's not forget that. So even at this point with a little epoxy sitting on it, we can still take care of that. So um, this is just going to be so much easier than waiting until 
the epoxy's on. Now I thought we'd clean these up, but we obviously weren't quite careful enough. So here we go. That should do it. Once that fuzz gets coated with epoxy, you got a big sanding, much more difficult or time consuming sanding job. A little more work there. So, uh, any place you see fuzz, this is a good time to get rid of the fuzz on the pieces. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay, we're looking pretty good. A little teensy bit here. And um, again, you know, this kind of attention to detail is um, the reason we do it is because it makes the job so much easier. Um, and that's what we're all about, making this fun and easy and quick. So um, taking care of details like that, just make it go faster and make the final product better too. Okay, I think we're looking clean now. Good. Oops. Well, as soon as you say it, you see it a little bit more. So just keep checking them. Okay. Now, we are good. Okay, so we'll get this epoxy on here. I'm sanding dust off. And we're just trying to get it on here fast at this point. Not too, and we have paper, uh, plastic down on the table. So um, we won't get epoxy all over our table. Um, inevitably, this is going to be a little bit messy. We don't want this too thin. Um, this is not a time to be spreading it super thin. You just want to get a thick enough coating that you're going to have a good bond. You'll have epoxy squeezing out everywhere. Um, that's what you want. If you do this too thin, you're going to have voids. Um, and voids are never good because you can get water in there and you know and there's all sorts of issues and it's not as strong so no voids and since we're using clear um, it's not very thick if you're working at a higher temperature um, it's you're going to have to work fairly quickly uh, on all this um, but you might want to add just a teensy bit of phenolic powder to make your mixture a little less liquid or else um, cool your resin down a little bit before you start have your resin sitting in a cool place or even in the fridge um, I'm working with resin that's about 46 degrees uh, you can see I've got my heavier suit on so this resin is about 46 degrees and uh, that's my room temperature too. That gives me time to work and talk. <laughs> Otherwise I might have trouble. Um, and it also makes my resin thicker. That's the point. This resin is thicker because it's colder. And so I'm getting a pretty thick coating on here. If your resin's super liquid because it's so warm, you're not going to get quite as thick a coating unless you add a little phenolic or a little silica to the mixture. And then you'll get a slightly thicker coating. You do want a fairly thick coating. You want, and now I'm using the reflection. I can't tell how thick that coating is and, um, or whether it's even without getting the reflection. So I'm using the reflection off the lights. I have to put my head down to see that. Um, without the reflection, I can't, I can tell the surface is coated, but I can't tell the thickness at all or the, how well it's covered. Okay. Now one gauge for thickness, uh, little brushes, little, you know, flecks of brush hair, you can just lift out and wipe off on your table, plastic. Okay, that looks pretty consistent now. Now one gauge, uh, that was just about what I expected. Um, that used for, I have a little bit in here, but not much, very little, just a, one brushful. Um, so that used four large marks of epoxy uh, to coat that really thoroughly. Okay, and the next surface, 
I just took these apart, laid them out. This is horizontal grain, this is vertical grain, this is horizontal. So this is my middle piece. You might have the opposite pattern. You might have vertical, horizontal, vertical. So that's fine too. Put the different grain pattern in the center so you have a balanced sandwich. Okay? So your center piece is going to be the grain pattern that runs the opposite direction from the other two. Doesn't matter whether it's horizontal or vertical. Um, okay, so now we'll mix up another four. This piece is going to go like that, but we're going to coat the back side before we put it down. So, um, so we have a little bit more epoxy in the joint, and also so if there is a void, it's not a void where there's bare wood exposed inside the uh, joint. There uh, might be a little pocket of air, we try not to do that. There might be a teensy little pocket of air, but on each side of that pocket of air will be epoxy instead of bare wood. So we'll coat the back side of this, and then we'll put it down on there, then we'll coat the front side, and then we'll coat the back side of this one. Okay, so the back side of this one next, and we'll be back in a minute. I think you've seen the coating. Um, turned out I had the squeegee ready, probably might not have seen it on the yellow. Uh, I had the squeegee ready, but um, I like doing it with, I, I didn't use it. I didn't want to use it. Um, if I'd squeegeed over these, I found the brush was working great. If I'd squeegeed over the holes, I would have had a lot of resin going down on the table. And um, so the brush worked out really nicely. So no use for the squeegee here. Yeah. There's a little more fuzz on these pieces. Yeah. Hopefully your preparation was better than mine as far as getting the fuzz off. There, now we're looking good. Okay, so it's going to be that surface next. Okay, I think you've seen the coating. I'll go ahead and coat the rest of these surfaces. And, um, well, actually, I'll, I'll coat this surface and then lay it up. I'll let you see the laying up of the pieces. Okay, see you in a minute. So uh, now we have the middle piece, uh, the back side of the middle piece coated. And we'll pick that up. And that's even, I don't know, you, yeah, there you can see the reflection. See how even that is? Um, reflects evenly, a thick coating everywhere. And again, that was four large marks of resin to coat that, that thoroughly. And put that down on top. Okay. And now another, this time I'm going to do eight because I'll coat this surface. Let's flip this one so we coat the right surface here. Um, flip, flip the last piece over. And um, so I'll do, maybe I'll do um, yeah, about eight. I'll do eight large marks um, of resin so I can do both these surfaces. Flip that on top and we'll have the seat ready to put in place. That's exciting. Okay, see you in a minute. So a little bit of last minute preparation here, which you can do ahead of time. Since uh, now I'm telling you about it, and I sh could have done it ahead of time if I thought of it. Um, so there can be a lot of slippery things sliding around. So, uh, and I had kind of big sloppy clamping pads before, um, and so now I've cut down the clamping pad so it's nice and tight because there's going to be some epoxy. I'm going to be able to clean it up and not have a, a clamping pad glued to the side of my boat in the end. And I've coated the clamping pad, I don't know if you can see it, but I've coated it with a, uh, a clear plastic, uh, just packaging tape. Epoxy won't stick to that. Then I put a little bit of um, double-sided tape on the back side of that. And um, now I'm going to stick it, whoops, dropped one. Stick it right onto the clamp there. So now I don't have to worry about, as long as that double-sided tape holds on, I don't have to worry about the clamping pads being separate and having to hold them in place while I get the clamp tight. So um, any preparations like that can make life easier. And we'll get this back in place. Okay, just like so. Okay, now we're ready. This is where it gets sticky. I've got my box of gloves right here, so I can grab a new glove anytime. Rip these off and grab a new one. I've got paper towels right here so I can clean up uh, my gloves if they're just a little bit sticky not too sticky okay you might notice uh, we've got some newspaper down there so to catch the drips we're going to have a lot of drips here 
um, coming out of our laminate as we squeeze it together, we want drips. We want to know that there's excess epoxy in there. If you don't get drips, if you don't get epoxy squeezing out, you're going to have voids. So um, you always want excess epoxy. Let's put this in place. Hmm. Before I do that, though, let's take a little bit of um, this. Is let's take a 90 some of this 90 80 grit, and we're just going to rough things up. Okay, so we've got a little 80 grit, and right where that seat back is going to come down inside, we're going to braid that surface a little bit there. We should have already wiped it down at some time, either with water or with acetone to get the blush off of it. But now we'll give it an abraded surface that lets the epoxy grab hold better. Okay. Just roughing that up as much as we can. There we go. Let's go with that. We're going to take a little epoxy. We have some left over here still. We're going to take a little epoxy and put it right on those surfaces. There, that's the clear over the tube, carbon fiber tube. The same on this side. Again, the clear. And up over the carbon fiber tube. And on these pieces here, whoops, sliding apart. And up onto that joint. Okay, well, sliding, sliding, sliding. There we go. Okay. Now well, maybe enough would have like, squeezed out there that we didn't have to do that, but let's not take anything for granted. Let's make sure we do double precautions everywhere. Okay, now, this is tricky. <laughs> we've got to Bend it into place, get it to fit. Okay, there, we got it. Locked in, notches, it's all the way down. Remember we needed to put a weight on this side. Let's wait on that though. Let's not get that in place. Yeah. Okay, and that's gonna to wanna to flop backwards. So we're gonna put a clamp over here just to support that a little bit until we have our, everything in place. Okay, looking good, a lot of epoxy squeezing out everywhere, but we, and time for new gloves already. It's too much on those gloves to wipe off. Okay, so those can go down there on the floor. If you're working in a warm temperature, uh, this is a good time to keep the pace going. Don't answer the phone. Um, okay, let's get some of our little paper clamps on the seat back as the next step. And um, we had a bigger clamp on the top of the seat back, so we can get that in place as well. Oops, this close. I let my hands dry off a little bit, they're a little damp, so. Gloves aren't working. Okay, in the center there, and then we have paper clamps wherever we think we might want one. You might as well use all of your paper clamps on this just to make sure there's no void anywhere. Okay, don't, you can't go down the side because that face is uh, reserved. And get a clamp here to support this side. We're just using these side clamps now to keep the angle of the seat tipped forwards to the correct angle. Okay, we'll go all along the bottom with paper clamps. Put those in fairly far, not all the way though, because we don't want to glue them in. Good! That's looking real good. Another one over here. Now these paper clamps, you may think, oh, it doesn't really need it there. But let's go ahead and use them anyway, um, because we're doing a fair amount of other things here, and we don't want anything to get disrupted. Okay, now, 
My hands are not quite as moist, so let's get gloves on. We'll clean off some of that excess epoxy that's running down. Um, and we'll probably do that a couple of times, we'll see, but I wouldn't be surprised if we wanted to do that again at some point. And these are extra large gloves. If you, find, if you have a glove that's way too big, it's awkward because it gets in everything. But if you have a glove that's a little tight, you're not going to get it on if your hands are slightly sweaty and um, moist. So um, a glove that's loose but not huge on you is best. Okay, so cleaning this off here, all this excess epoxy is what we wanted to see running out exactly right. That's the right amount of epoxy. It's not like, oh, we used too much. It's just correct. Okay. But remember, this is easy to clean it off when it's liquid. And it's a lot of work to sand it all off after it gets hard, so you don't miss any. And think in terms of not gluing your clamps on. So if you have a drip going down towards a, one of the paper clamps, um, try to catch that drip before it gets on the clamp. Whoopsie, missed this one, got right on the clamp. On the back, this one dripped, we had epoxy drip right onto the clamp. So we're gonna take that off, clean it off a little bit. Okay, uh, now let's get you around back so you can see what we're going to do back there. And um, that went very well on the seat. Whoops, I'm going to drop you. Okay, here we are. And we have fairly, not quite as good light back here. I'd rather have a little more light, but it's fairly good. Okay, how's that position work for you? Let's get you down a little bit. Okay, now. We're going to coat across the back with clear. We've got lots of clear, of course, so it's squeezed all out. Um, coat across the back with clear, right level with the deck, where that back small deck piece is going to sit. And then we'll get that in position next. That's going to be a bit of a trick, but not a problem. Now that we're so capable. Okay. And again, I'm trying to keep it from getting down on those paper clamps. I don't need a paper clamp as part of the permanent part of this boat. Um, they're not very heavy, but they would not look quite right. Okay. So just a just about a three quarter inch or one inch wide band of epoxy right where that back deck is going to attach. Okay, and then we'll get the front edge of the back deck coated as well. This doesn't have to be terribly neat, just get it on there fast. Okay, and then we're going to work this out and coat the front edge of that of this piece. Uh oh, this is tight. <laughs> I hadn't thought of this problem. Um, the boat gets narrower as we go back. Let's try going forwards with this. That might be a better plan. The white book is wider. Go under the seat here, maybe. Well, we could coat it in place. It's just a little bit awkward to do that. Because it's the front edge we're trying to get to. Okay, this will work. So, now you can't see because you're on the back. But I just stuck that piece forwards just far enough that I can coat the front edge. I'm not pu pulling it all the way out. Okay, so this is the back deck. I'm coating the front edge, the edge grain of the plywood, and I'm coating... You know, I do want to take that all the way out, because I want to coat the bottom too, and that's just going to be awkward in place. So there we go. It came right out pretty easily there. Okay, so now um, here's the back deck piece. I want to coat the um, edge here. Remember, if you've beveled that edge, and um, which edge is up and which edge is down, um, but we've coated the back edge with epoxy already. Remember, that's, that's from before and it's dry. 
So um, just coating this edge. We're going to coat the end grain first because um, we want to let that soak in. The end grain will absorb quite a bit of epoxy. Yeah, I'm trying to work in front of the camera. All of this is a lot easier when, <laughs> when you're not trying to film it at the same time and figure out where the camera is watching. But um, not a problem. It's kind of fun to film it. Okay. So we get pretty thick on that end grain because um, the end grain s just sucks the resin right in. So you want a thick coating so you don't get a dry joint there. Okay, now we can go on to the other surfaces. Oh, remember the end grain? Let's let's go for the end grain. Nah, hesitating here. I'm going to leave a little speck in the middle. That's not. No, I'm not going to coat the end grain on the end. Now the reason I'm going to coat the bottom up to the end. We're not going to coat that end grain. The reason is we may need CA to hold that place in place if it wants to pop up or down. So, um, and the CA is not going to stick to wet epoxy. So, let's not coat the end grain. We'll coat right up, coat right up to the edge on the sides, but we won't coat the end grain. Okay, leave ourselves a little leeway there. Okay, so we've coated the entire bottom surface and the end grain along the front and we're going to coat, oops, I just grabbed it. Try not to grab it right where the epoxy is. And we're going to coat where we're going to put our fillet right along the top surface here. So um, in about half an inch, three quarters of an inch here, five eighths of an inch. Okay. And there, oops. Frustrating when you can't see, isn't it? Okay. So we've got a band there. The bottom is entirely coated. This front edge is quite thickly coated so it can soak into the end grain but we're not coating the ends. We'll count on the epoxy just kind of wicking down there and coating that. Okay, and another little glitch here. Um, looks like we didn't get all the fuzz off this surface, so let's get it off. <laughs> Better late than never. Okay, how's that? That's looking pretty good. Okay, there we go. No problem. Okay, and slide this back in place uh, from the front and back. And we're going to have to do a little more clean up on our backrest because more epoxy squeezing out and running down. Ah. If you flex that down a little bit, it works best. Okay, now we can get this piece somewhat in place um, now because we know the corners right here are defined and same at the other edge because the seat is, make sure it's all the way up against your combing, seat's all the way up against the combing there and that defines this point and this point over here. So um, the seat back isn't touching there. So we're going to have to adjust that. But let's get this piece in place. And this is when we're going to be using the CA. So we've got our CA handy and ready to go. So far we're doing good. Our gloves aren't too sticky. A little bit, but not too sticky. Uh, if they were worse, I would take them off. I'm, I'm going to wipe them off in a minute here. Now, let's see if we've got CA coming out. Okay, and I'm using this bar to hold this piece up flat against the bottom of the bar. I want the top edge of the plywood essentially flush with the top edge of the carbon fiber tube 
because that defines our deck surface. So we'll put a couple of dots of CA here. Whoops. May have to clean this out again. We'll see. Now we get it. We got it there. Okay, a couple dots of CA there to hold that level. Right between the edge of the deck and the carbon fiber tube. On that side, and then as soon as this grabs, make sure it's flush. Feels good. Just very slightly below the edge. You don't want it above the top surface of the carbon fiber tube, but it should be pretty close to flush. I've got it just very slightly below because I don't want it above, but it's essentially flush. Okay. As soon as that grabs, we'll move to the other side and get that in place. Okay. But we can't let go of it or else it'll fall down. So this is an awkward time. Handy to have clamps. So let's use a, this is a weak squeeze clamp, so that's really what I want. I don't want a lot of pressure there. And that may not even work. No, that's going to tip. So, um, let's see. We want to get the other side. I'm going to put a little tension on the clamp, the bar clamp. Okay, that'll hold it. And here we are on the other side. And we'll get this up into place, this back deck piece. Let's get it up, flush with the deck, with the carbon fiber tube. Okay, feels good there. It was CA here. A little dot there, and a little dot here. Okay, whoops. There's two, you want two dots so it doesn't twist on you. And everything's tight in the corner. The um, combing, we have the combing in the corner, the uh, laminates of the back rest, and then we have the uh, back deck piece right up tight against there. Okay, and that is just about right. Okay, I think that's set. Good. So that's looking good. Now we want to pull the back of the seat back against the back deck there. But first, let's do a little clean up on the front um, because we have that epoxy running out which is good, that's what we wanted. So put your uh, paper clamps, don't put them directly under the ovals, put them between the ovals, and then you won't have epoxy running down on them. Make sure you don't uh, finish up the night or the process with your paper clamps um, being glued on with epoxy. Okay, now we have quite a bit of excess epoxy here from what's run out. We're gonna add a little bit of silica in there and then we're going to put the silica in here and then pull our back rest back against the back deck there. Okay, you can see it's still creamy and smooth. The barbs fall back in to the mass, but no, no drip, no sag. Um, that's what we want. Okay, so let's get that in place. Right along the edge and going down over the edge just a little bit is what we're aiming for. So it's between the two pieces when we push them together. We have clear epoxy between them, but let's get some thickened epoxy between them as well. And um, I think try to make this go all the way across. We'll, we'll mix some more for a fillet, so you don't have to worry about having enough on there to make a fillet. This is just really right now to get thickened epoxy in the joint right between the two pieces. All the way up to the edge there. Okay, and a little bit here. You as well use everything you've got um, at this point because we will be doing a nice fillet along here and you can use the excess for the fillet. Okay, probably time for a new set of new left hand glove for me. Uh, my right hand glove is okay still. Okay, and the next step is to pull the back together with the back deck. So we have the back rest curved all the way back 
So it's touching the back deck in that curve. Okay. Again, hard to get these gloves on if your hands are a little bit moist. But, there we go. Okay. Now it's hard to, hard to tie knots with gloves too, but let's do our best here. Okay. And we're going to tighten up just a little bit, but not much. We don't want to make that, we don't want to make this back deck piece bow down. So, um, that's looking pretty good. We're holding it together just about right. Okay, now, unanticipated, if we tie this on without any plastic under it, that nylon, we're going to have to sand that nylon cord right off um, because it's not going to come off. Okay, so some kind of plastic is really important here. All the way goes in the oval and all the way down and underneath the uh, backrest piece. Okay, otherwise that nylon is going to be glued right on. Never come off. Okay, and we're going to find this is easiest to get tight if we do two loops. We don't really need two loops for strength, but it's going to be easier to pull tight that way. And I think we'll do our knot. Now let's put our knot on the back. I think that might be the easiest. Make sure you're protective barrier stays in place there. Um, that would be a mess to glue this on, and I have to be on the other side to tie a knot there. Hope you know your knots. Um, be nice to tie a nice um, square knot here, rather than a granny knot, and I think that will hold best. If you have another set of hands, they can hold the knot tight uh, while you clinch it. Okay, now that's that wants to be tight. You want to have it tight against there. You don't want a gap. Okay, a square knot over and under and under and over. Okay, and that looks good. Teensy little gaps, okay, because we're going to put a fillet in there. And with, a ga uh, with epoxy, a slight gap is actually just as strong as having it tight. Um, so that looks very nice. I hope you can see that uh, well enough. See how we've got the um, yellow plastic, clear plastic will work fine, some kind of plastic that the epoxy won't stick to, um, protecting our nylon cord. Nylon cord comes around behind the back deck, and um, it is supported by this... Uh, by this bar clamp too. Now the bar clamp should be touching at each, each uh, side, touching the carbon fiber tube. And now we'll want to bring this up here. That's an important step. Don't forget this clamp there. Okay, so now we know the back deck is straight because it's being held up against the bar clamp. Uh, if you used a piece of wood across there and the rope trick, that's okay, the bar clamp is a little bit easier, but you can get it to work with the other system. But you need your piece of wood to be stiff enough that it doesn't flex down, because that back deck does want to flex down a little bit, and you don't want that. You want the back deck flat, straight across, because when we apply the film on the whole back of the kayak, uh, the film wants to come to a flat surface. It doesn't want to come to a surface, a surface that's curved down. Okay, and once we get this all glued up, you're not going to have any chance to change that angle at all. Um, looking good so far. I think probably the next step is going to be doing our fillet across here. So let's mix up, let's see, fillets take a fair amount of epoxy, remember. Um, and I think we're going to do two things at once here. Uh, we'll mix up clear, and while the clear is still real runny, we'll fill in along the edge here. Can we see this? Um, now nah, let me back up just a little bit. Oops, I just got the wrong way. Okay, so um, while the clear, just doing anything, I think I can take this out now. Um, while the clear is still running, we'll fill in along the edge here, and um, that'll sink down a little bit and get into the end grain and seal that. Later on, we'll do a fillet along the bottom. Um, and we'll do the clear on both sides, 
and then we'll do the fillet along here, and then I think we'll go ahead and do the fillet along the bottom uh, right after the back fillet. Okay, so um, I think we're going to need to start with about eight clear, large clear marks and eight small marks of hardener, and then we'll be doing the silica, adding it in, so we have a nice mixture for filleting. Um, the back fillet doesn't have to be quite as thick. Um, remember, we're going to use the clear here before we mix in the silica. The back fillet doesn't have to be quite as thick a mixture because it's right way up. It's not going to fall down. These underneath fillets are going to have to be thicker, so we might add more silica um, by the time before we do those underneath fillets. Otherwise, they'll just slide right down the side of the boat and not help at all, not be in the right place at all. Okay, not a bad idea to keep checking that you're combing. Uh, the angle of the back is up a little bit too high for the combing, but it's very easy to push that back enough for the combing to fit in there. So, um, not a bad idea, idea to keep checking that. Okay, uh, now, um, we mixed up the eight uh, clear marks. While it was still liquid, we ran um, quite a bit of epoxy along this edge, right here, the joint between the back deck and the carbon fiber tube, and the same on the other side. And now, um, I don't want to forget this, um, because you probably have the same thing. Oh, in fact, a couple of things. Um, there was quite a lot of epoxy running down the side of the boat here. I didn't want to have to sand the bottom again, because we have that so smooth and beautiful. So um, I took that off with a brush and um, the excess off, and then I used a little acetone on a paper towel and wiped it completely clean there. So that should not be a problem now. So I'm going to watch that. And I just noticed that this side has skidded up a little bit here in the corner. Um, so we need to get that deck down a little bit. And let's see if the weight's going to do it. Um, before it was the other side that wanted to skid up. And um, this weight has some packaging tape on it, but I'm not sure it's enough. So we're going to add some packaging tape. Okay, so whatever you use to hold this down, make sure it's coated or has some, plastic, some form of plastic underneath. Um, and we'll do one more cleanup here. Get some of that epoxy off the brush. Now with these eight marks mixed up, I'm going to have to be fairly quick here or else I might lose it. Um, okay, but I need this piece to be down and in place before doing that fillet. Now this is going to make it hard to do the fillet too, isn't it? Um, and let's get that down. There, okay, now it's down. Will it stay down without the weight? I think so. So I can put the weight back on after I do my fillet. And this side is down, but we do have a little bit more epoxy running out on this side. So let's catch that before it goes down the side of the boat. So I would keep checking that uh, area because you don't want to sand down your, the side of the boat again. Okay, so keep checking both sides. Okay, I think we're in place, ready for a nice fillet along here. Again, no sag, creamy and smooth, but the barbs kind of tend to, well, it's a bit of a barb, but it's gradually melding back in. So I think we're good. Maybe a teensy bit thicker than we really have to have on this, but um, I think it's pretty good. The real key to having nice fillets is having the epoxy mixed exactly right. If it's too runny, the fillet will sag. If it's too stiff, you'll get it's hard to spread and you'll get barbs and it's just kind of a mess. Okay, so this is looking really nice. And this is a fairly, this is going to be a high, a fair amount of load on this um, joint. So let's not be skimpy here. Let's, we're going to use most of what we've got mixed up here. And this is, if you're in a warm climate, this is the time to be working very fast because you want to get the epoxy out of your mixing pot. 
Once it's out of your pot, it'll slow, it'll slow down. It won't set off as fast. But while it's in the pot, it's generating heat and it can blast itself off in um, a matter of minutes because of the chemical heat that is created as it sets off. The faster it sets off, the more heat it makes and it accelerates the process um, exponentially. So get it out of your container and then work with it. Don't, don't try to get it perfect as you place it. Just get in roughly the right place or else you'll lose it and have a bit of a mess. Okay, so that's basically all we've got in the container. And um, that when we do our fillet and then clean it up, we'll have probably enough excess to do underneath the deck as well. Okay, again, time for, seems to be my left hand, I think, getting sticky. Time for a new glove on the left hand. Don't, don't mess around with trying to clean your glove off at this stage. This is a big, we're doing a lot of um, big areas and you don't really have time to, uh, to spend cleaning your glove off. Of course, getting your hand dry so you can put the new glove on takes some time too. Okay, I've, I'm actually well ahead here because the shop is so cool, but um, if it's midsummer, you gotta be working fast. Okay, I'm gonna start right under my uh, lashing there so I can get that part good. Okay, and we're using a pretty wide part of the spoon there because we want a big fillet. Okay, very nice. That fillet went very well, very clean. And um, so I don't think I'll have to sand that even. I'm going to get this clamp out of the way. It's not supporting anything now. And here we go again. So we're not... If we tipped it in and used the tip, I think you can see, if we tipped the spoon in and used the tip, we'd have a much smaller fillet. We, we don't want a small fillet. We want a big fillet here. So we're using the flat bottom of the spoon for this fillet. Okay, and you can see that's coming out just right. We're, you know, below the oval cutouts and everything. Um, we're going to check both sides, make sure that back piece hasn't popped up at all and make sure we're tight on both sides. That is looking pretty good. Okay, there. Make sure it's centered too. A little bit of play there. Um, make sure the back piece isn't all the way over to one side. You can check by how far those, how far the edges over the carbon fiber tube. Should be just about halfway, just about halfway over the carbon fiber tube. And my back hadn't, wasn't exactly centered. Um, so now it looks like it's pretty darn good. I think that looks pretty good. It's good when you get it. Okay, so let's clean this fillet up. And this is where we'll be using the excess underneath. So we can just start right underneath as we clean up this fillet, placing the, the uh, filleting material. And this is thick enough that we're not going to get any sag underneath, so that's good. Uh, we don't have to add any more silica. I know we mentioned that, but we don't need to. Okay. To clean it up, you have to get all the excess off your brush each time um, to get a good clean surface. Now this fillet looks nice enough. I don't think we'll have to sand it. So I'm trying to clean it up along the edge really nicely without touching the fillet. Now on these um, side fillets, you don't need a mirror. You can actually lean down and see what you're doing. Uh, by putting your head slightly inside the boat. And so that makes it a lot easier. So we're doing a fillet along both sides. 
at the edge and then we're also going to do a fillet along underneath the back deck between the back deck and the back of the seat so a lot of filleting going on here okay and this is a good time also to um, where the back of the seat comes out to the sides of the hull. Let's get in that area and fill that in. There may be a very slight gap there, which is fine because you can push the epoxy right in there. And we'll do a fillet there as well. Fill it everywhere. Any, any place these two, any two place, two pieces are coming together, do a fillet underneath here. Okay, but we won't spend too long on that right now. Just, and we'll come back to that very shortly because we do want to keep working with wet epoxy everywhere. We don't want anything to set up. But what we're going to do now is move to the front and get the back of the combing attached with fillets. To the, the back edge of the combing attached with fillets to the backrest. So these little sort of wings here, we're going to bring in and attach like so. In fact, um, we had talked about using some clamps there. Let's put a dot of CA. That's going to make things easier. Time for new gloves again. Right. Let's uh, do our CA and then we'll get the gloves on. A little risky here. But, oh, shoot. That just pulled up a little bit there. Let's push that back down. Okay. Good. Make sure your sides, make sure your back stays down. Um, it has a tendency to want to pull up a little bit. In fact, this is probably a good time to put our weights in play, play here. So we got a weight in here. Any kind of weight will do, but. Make sure anywhere it touches the epoxy that it's got um, some kind of protective plastic on it. Okay, let's get that, get it all the way down, okay. And we'll get a weight on the other side. These, these are zinc ingots. They're great things. Um, you can order them from us. They're the most useful tool in our entire shop. We have every tool you can imagine, but these get used more than any other tool. So uh, you can order those from us if you want, and they're very, very useful. Okay, so everything's down tight again. The back skidded up just about an eighth of an inch, so now it's down again. We'll watch for that though. Okay, but once we get these um, wings in, the back should be controlled. So let's get these wings attached with CA. Okay, now you're not going to be able to see a thing, are you? So let's, uh, why don't you come around this other side with us here. And, because we were doing pretty well in the back there. See that nice fillet? Let's zoom in on that while we're over here. And uh, you can see what a nice job we're getting here. See that nice fillet? That's really a nice smooth fillet. No sanding required. We'll just leave that just the way it is. Okay, back out just a little bit. And we're gonna come right around here so you can see what we're doing. Okay, so we'll get our CA going here and make sure again that the back, it's when I push the back back that it tends to skid up a bit. So let's make sure it doesn't skid up because we don't want the CA to hold it in the wrong place. Once the CA is on, the back should be locked in place. <laughs> And now, again, we've got a CA blockage, so we'll get another nail. Okay, the trick, when you've got the CA blockage, the trick is just to use a longer nail and shove it down there. Um, and open that nozzle up again. Let's see if that did it. Okay, and bring the wings in. Make sure you're back. And now I've got the wing in just a, 
Ah, I haven't quite got it here. Oh, there we go. Here we got some CA. We've got the wing in just about a sixteenth of an inch inside the back edge of the uh, inside the side edge of the back rest. That'll let us put a little line of epoxy along the outside. So it's not lined up perfectly, it's just very slightly, the wing of the combing, very slightly inside the back edge of the backrest. Just by a sixteenth. And it's parallel. The um, wing is parallel to the outer edge of the backrest. Okay, is that going to hold? There, we got it. Okay, double checking. It is all the way down on this side. The wing, the backrest is all the way down, sitting on the carbon fiber tube on this side. Now let's go back forward and check. Okay, and it's all the way down on this side too. So we'll get a little, little bit dab of our CA here. And get it to come out. Okay, it looks good. And we are all the way down here, same as on the other side. Now we're ready to move along here with and fillets on the inside, epoxy on the outside, and get this front part stabilized. And uh, then we'll jump back to the back, do our fillets underneath the back deck, and we'll have it wrapped up. So moving along really nicely here. Okay, so clear epoxy, let's get gloves on, and mix up some clear epoxy. As soon as we get, you know, we really could take those weights off. No, let's leave them on. We'll leave the weights in place for now. Um, might get them off and clean up underneath them and then put them back in a minute. The less sanding, the better. Okay. Okay, so um, next we'll mix up clear epoxy, coat along right along outside here on this side, along the outside on that side, on the inside for about three quarters of an inch onto the backrest and three quarters of an inch forwards onto the splash rail. And um, then we'll do our fillet in there. We'll make sure we get the uh, seat back glued firmly with a fillet to the hull right there at the bottom corner. And same on this side. And uh, let's see, maybe, could you see that? Maybe you're blocked there uh, by that weight sticking through. Um, yeah, let's move this weight back a little bit. So um, we'll want to fill right in there with epoxy where the seat back touches the hull with a nice thick fillet there. Maybe a little bit of a fillet right underneath the seat back. So um, we're just going to mix up for this job and we'll be filling along here. First uh, with clear coating and then continuing our fillet um, from the front all the way back to the back. Uh, so let's mix up, um, let's start with four clear and we'll see how far we go with that. Um, well, with the fillets, let's do six, six clear and then we'll add phenolic to that. I mean, not phenolic, but uh, silica to that. So six clear and um, we'll be back. I'll, I'll go ahead and do some of that work and then check back in with you. Okay, you can see right along here we're filling and we had to take the clamp off, of course, to get under it. And um, so we've got this smoothed out where the clamp's going to go. And in here, we wanted to push it down in that groove as much as possible. So, um, so we get a good fill there. And then we'll put the clamp back on, but we're going to use a little piece of plastic under the clamp. So um, we don't glue our clamp on. And then we'll clean this part off here. You can see how we're working here. This I think we we'll just do this kind of small fillet with the brush. That looks pretty clean. And again, 
Try. You can't work it too much or else it just starts, doesn't get better sometimes. But um, you do want to get it cleaned off nicely and get as smooth a job as you can. Um, and then just leave it. We can sand, we'd rather not though. Okay, that's looking pretty nice there. And um, a little acetone on a paper towel cleans things off a little bit better than just the paper towel. If you've got the acetone, that's going to help. But if you don't, just use a paper towel and do it as best you can. Um, acetone will save some sanding though and clean up work later. So that's kind of nice, but worth getting it. Okay, yeah, that looks pretty clean. Okay, and um, now the last bit is going to be the fillet underneath the um, back deck, between the back deck and the back rest, reaching up underneath there. And here we'll be able to see a little bit if we reach our head underneath. And, um, doesn't doesn't have to be neat for appearance sake because nobody will see it but if you have it real real sloppy and uh, barbs of epoxy and stuff it'll collect dirt and it won't be as strong you're adding weight without strength so we'll make it as clean as we can okay so we're going to get that fillet done that's going to take us a little while but um, I want to show you what we've got done so far, and then I'll let you go. And I'll just go finish up this last fillet. Oh, and a um, couple of notes. We, um, in the, our last um, mixing that we showed on film, or talked about on film, was six large marks. That did quite well. Let me show you what we've done with that. And then, subsequently, uh, we mixed another eight large marks, and that looks like that'll be enough to finish us off. So with the six marks, we did over here, see that nice fillet there in the corner? See if I can zoom in without getting too much epoxy on the camera. So you can see that nice fillet there between, and we want a fairly large fillet there, because there's a lot of load. Um, if you lean back hard on that back, backrest, there's a lot of load right on that corner. Then we filled in right, see below the clamp, right along the bottom edge, and we'd already filled in from above, just like we did on this side here, right in that area, um, blending in with the fillet that we did uh, all the way to the front, and then cleaning that off. And we also filled just a very small fill along the outside where the back rest meets the combing there. So um, that was pretty much that six. And then we mixed another eight to finish that off. And that gives us excess now to finish with a, sorry about that, finish with a nice thick combing under that back deck, between the back deck, a uh, nice thick fillet underneath the back deck, between the back deck and the sides of the boat, and between the back deck and the uh, back side of the backrest. Okay, so um, looking really good. This will set up super strong. I have a little clean up with sanding, but um, actually it's looking pretty clean. Not too bad at all. So um, very successful, <clears throat> very successful evening, and I've enjoyed working together with you and enjoyed your company. So um, this is Will signing off for the evening. I still have a little bit more to do, but I think you get the idea and I think you're getting really quite good at doing these fillets and keeping them neat. Um, the big thing is make sure your epoxy is creamy and smooth. Okay, when you mix uh, creamy and smooth when you mix in the silica. 
Oh, um, there was one more note that I wanted to make, and that was, um, we're frequently getting questions. Uh, let's see if we can see a little bit better here. Uh, there, and we got lights right behind my head. That's a little bit awkward. Um, here we go. Uh, so we frequently get questions about how much powder to put into the epoxy. Well, we don't tell people too precisely because that varies with how thick the epoxy is to start with, depending on temperature and various other features, and also what kind of fillet you're doing. But um, when I was mixing eight large marks, and my epoxy is a little bit thick because it's, it's under 50 degrees out here. Um, you see the wool cap, heavy, heavy work suit. Um, so when I was mixing eight large marks of resin, eight small marks of hardener, I was using, uh, as a starting point, three heaping teaspoons of silica, heaping plastic spoons of silica. And then I was finding I had about another half um, uh, plastic spoon to, the silica, to make it a creamy, perfect mixture. So that's a bit of a guideline. If you start with three large spoonfuls of silica with eight large marks of um, resin and eight small marks of hardener, that should be a good starting point, and then you can add a little bit more from there to get it just to the consistency you want. Okay, um, great job tonight, and uh, that's pretty much our last major glue up. We still have to glue in our carbon fiber tubes across the back deck, but that's very small and very quick. So, well done, and we'll be paddling soon. Uh, looking forward to paddling together. Okay. Have a good evening. Bye. Okay, one last note for the evening. Right along this edge of the uh, backrest, the, um, there was a slight gap where the plies were opening up, right in that area there. So we pushed some epoxy in there, and then just to make doubly certain, we um, attached this clamp here and brought the back end of the clamp up against the back of the backrest and that pushed that gap right together. So, um, one of the aspects of working with epoxy is to um, keep checking and um, see if there are any problems. You can't fix a problem if you don't see it. Um, so, the first thing is to keep checking and see if there are any problems. And then the other part of working with epoxy is to come up with creative clamping ideas. And, um, so there are probably other ways we could have forced that together. I couldn't put a clamp on it, um, just a squeeze clamp, right, squeezing it together like we have up above with the uh, paper clamps because of the uh, back edge of the combing coming right in there and not leaving any lip for a clamp to hold onto. So that was a creative way to push it together and it worked great. Probably just filling it with epoxy would have been okay, but this is even better. So creative clamping solutions when you see a problem. And the other side did not have that same thing happening. Um, so over on the other side, it was all tight together. All three layers of plywood were tight together. Okay, well, that was quite the evening. And um, that's probably one of our bigger glue jobs uh, in that it has a lot of more complicated little places where we're putting fillets and doing our gluing as opposed to um, some of our other jobs where it's bigger surfaces, but less detail work. So, um, great job, and uh, that's pretty close. We'll be paddling really soon. Can't wait. Okay, good night. Okay, good morning. I came out first thing before breakfast to check my work. And it looks terrific, looks really good. And um, I put a heater in this morning, a uh, little shop heater here, blowing right on it because um, the shop's cold enough. And we're still a little bit, it's, it's not gonna come off on my finger at all, but it's still a little bit sticky when I touch it. Um, nothing comes off, but it's a little rubbery and a little sticky. I'm not quite ready for sanding. Um, at this stage. It would still kind of just mush around and mess up if I sanded it. But um, this is a good time to take off some of the clamps because they'll come off easily now. 
uh, because the epoxy is not very strong yet. But I'm going to leave on a few of the critical clamps, like the bar clamp across the back. And um, I think that's probably all that I need. Uh, maybe the clamp holding the back deck flat up against the bar clamp. But these ones will pull off and take the plastic off. They're, uh, they did a good job of not getting too much epoxy under any of these paper clamps, so that now uh, is making this process much easier. And especially now, now I did put a little piece of plastic under a couple of paper clamps where there was some epoxy under them. So um, a little forethought like that can save a lot of work. That one's stuck a little bit, but not too much. Okay, those off. This one can come out. Okay. And this big fillet behind the seat is big fillet behind the seat is pretty hard. Um, you know, a little rubbery still, but I think we can take this nylon cord off. We could still, if there was any place where it was helpful, we could still uh, slice the epoxy with a knife to remove excess epoxy. So um, let's see if we want to clean this up under here with a knife blade, because it's still rubbery, not hard. A little epoxy gluing the string to itself, but not to the boat. Okay, peel this off. Yeah, I think we might clean up in here a little bit with a knife blade just because it's faster and easier than sanding. And um, there we are. We're looking absolutely splendid. That looks really good. Okay, looking a little closer. You can see all the detail there. And uh, a little sanding and we'll have a real nice clean uh, look there. Okay, just wanted to show you that process. Talk to you soon, bye. Okay, you can see it's warmed up quite a bit. T-shirt weather, almost. It's a little, little cool still for that, but it's uh, pretty nice out here this morning. And um, we've got the seat nicely cleaned up. Uh, we started with 80 grit, and we were sanding. We caught it while the uh, fillets and the um, silica areas were still green. Made it a little hard to sand the um, thin areas where it was just clear because it was still a little, uh, a little mushy when we tried to sand it. So we sanded the fillets first and kept working. And um, by the time we had the fillets sanded, uh, the clear areas were starting to get hard enough to sand and come off as um, either just little rolls of epoxy or as dust. So we got it all sanded down really nicely and um, it's ready for coating. We'll coat uh, the back of the seat with epoxy and the um, both sides and the back deck with epoxy. The um, combing, I think we're just going to varnish. We're not going to do epoxy on that. Um, and you could go either way on that, but the varnish is faster and easier because it's so easy to sand compared to epoxy. But I do want, to, I think the seat will get, you know, I just want the seat, uh, it'll be a little bit stiffer with the epoxy on it. It's quite stiff now, very stiff. But um, having the wood filled with epoxy on both sides will make it even a little bit stiffer. So I think that'll be good. And um, don't mind a little extra sanding. Now one question that I get quite a bit is whether these uh, areas where you can still see where the epoxy was are going to matter or whether we have to sand those all the way out. And I want to come in closer so you can see that more clearly. And um, this is all the sanding I'm going to do. And uh, you could keep going, but I think these will blend in quite nicely. And I would do the same uh, if I was varnishing it, I think I'd leave them about like this too. I might go a little bit more with varnish, um, but with the epoxy I think they'll blend in and we won't notice them. You can see each of the stains here where it dribbled down and a little bit of extra epoxy in the wood here and here, just darkening it a little bit. But I think we'll be fine, so I'm not worried. Okay, so I've mixed up um, two. I'm going to use the big, uh, the one inch brush for this. And uh, I think this is my last one inch brush. 
Uh, so I'm going to trim that, not quite as much. I want it to work like a brush and try to create a smooth surface so I have less sanding. I'm going to trim it off, maybe a third of the bristles off, because it's still a bit too big for epoxy. So again, squeeze the bristles, and then, um, can you see here? Yeah. And then hold them flat and cut straight across. Try to get a straight cut there. That looks pretty nice. That'll work. Okay, and we've got two large marks of clear epoxy and two small marks of hardener mixed up. And I have this small brush too because I like mixing with it, so I may use it in some of the corners if the big brush if the big brush seems too large to get into some of the smaller parts areas. Okay. I want to get this on fairly quickly because I like the fact that it's you know runny and gonna brush on smoothly. And I'll be brushing with the grain so my brush marks won't show quite as much. And I'm going to coat the bottom edge. I sanded the bottom edge nicely so it's nice and smooth, nothing will catch on that. And so I want to get the bottom edge first, right along the bottom. Okay, and then we'll start working our way up and across. Any hairs you want to get off, just brush them off on a piece of paper or something. You could put uh, paper down in the bottom, might not be a bad idea, but um, we're not doing any heavy coating that it shouldn't drip or run or anything. We're just doing a very thin brushed on coating. Do inside the oval. And I sanded nicely inside the ovals. So there, it's very smooth inside these ovals now. Okay. And now you can see that the uh, coloration is blending quite nicely there. Um, and as the epoxy soaks in, it'll darken the wood a little bit more, and I think we'll have quite a good match with the epoxy to the epoxy, uh, where, there was, where there was epoxy on the surface already. Okay, I'm going to go all the way across here, across the top. Oh, you know, one thing um, I wanted to show you, I, I vacuumed this very carefully. I, I swiped it off with a with a whisk broom, and then I vacuumed it. It's pretty dust free, but I did mean to do a tack rag too, so uh, not too late. Um, a little bit late, but not too late for the majority of it. So this is a tack rag, sticky tack rag. They call it tack cloth or tack rag, and it's continuously sticky. It always stays sticky until it's been used so much that it's full of dust. Just always regroup it so you have a new area. And that will take any last dust off. That'll mean I don't have as many dust bumps to sand out of the final coating. Okay, and the back surfaces. This was super clean though, so I'm not too worried about where I coated already. That won't be a problem. Oh, there's a hair. Watch out for the um, hairs coming out of another hair. Hairs coming out of the brush. Um, try to catch those and pull them out. You could go out and get a $20 brush and probably not have any hairs, but that seems a little bit exorbitant for a one-use brush. Okay, there, all tacked. Now we can get back to our epoxy work. This is a very, I'm, I want this to be as thin as possible because I don't want a whole lot of sanding and we don't want a whole lot of weight. We just want a very thin coating here and we will be varnishing over this as well at a later stage. So this is just one of, this is just the first coat here. The next coats will be, next coat will be varnish. Okay, now isn't that looking splendid? Now I may be short of resin, um, but I really don't want to mix up more than two at a time on this because I do want it to, I don't want it to start setting at all. I want it to be as thin as possible. Rather it was even thinner, but a bit of a toss up here. I could have heated it and thinned it a little bit, 
but um, then it would start setting off faster and get thicker. So, so I did not heat this, but it is, as I say, a little warmer in the shop today. So it's going on pretty nicely. Always brush, do your final brush strokes with the grain, otherwise they'll show. Okay, that looks good. So, um, once you get it right, uh, don't go back over it unless you see something you have to touch uh, because that surface will start to, um, the brush marks will start to fade out of the surface and if you go back over it then they'll be, you'll be adding new brush marks. Okay, now the back deck. So I think you've seen what we're doing. We're going to do the back deck, the little back deck here, and then we'll do the back of the backrest. It looks like we're going to need probably another two um, large marks of epoxy to get this coated right. So um, we'll go ahead and do that and we're closing the gap. We'll be paddling soon. So um, we'll come back next time and do the carbon fiber tubes across the back uh, area. They'll go right across three of those and then lay the back deck on and we'll be paddling. Okay, see you later. Uh, here we are, and we have everything sanded beautifully, beautifully. Look how those fillets are real smooth, and we coated the seat. That looks that turned out really nicely, and uh, no bubbling. Um, I think we were a little bit lucky on that one because we did coat the seat in the morning. And um, let's see, let's see if we can get this up a little bit. We coated the seat in the morning, and uh, typically that can be a problem because. Um, as the air warms up, it can force air uh, out, the air in the wood expands, and the cells of the wood expands, and that air can be forced out and cause bubbling. But we were lucky we didn't get any bubbling at all, so um, that was nice. It never warmed up very, very much, might have just gone up a couple degrees. Okay, so um, now we're just going to do a small amount of varnishing to get started here. Uh, we're going to coat the bare wood of the splash rail and the top edge, and we'll do the bare wood running forwards on the um, decorative veneer on the deck. Now the tools, always, uh, the t if you want to get a good varnish job, the tools are important. Um, no matter how hard you work or how hard you try or how good you are, if you don't have the right tools, your job will be a little disappointing. Um, the most important tool is an excellent brush. These brushes are quite soft and very pliable. That's what you want is a very soft bristle. Um, if you have a stiff bristle, it's um, going to leave brush marks and you won't get a real smooth job. Okay, and with the brush, the next thing that's really important is that there not be any dust in it. Now I've got excellent light here. That's another tool that is equally important. It's excellent light. I have two spotlights here, a spotlight, and then 200 watt bulbs here. So. Um, from any angle, I should be able to get a good reflection and see how I'm doing. So light is important. Now, in this light, I'm flipping the brush bristles, and if there were any dust in there, since we have such bright lights, I would be able to see that dust flying up in the air, and I don't see any. Another approach with the brush is to uh, rinse it in paint thinner uh, before using it, and then make sure you um, get uh, brush out the paint thinner on a very clean piece of paper so you don't have a large amount of residue of paint thinner in your brush when you start um, with your first brush load of varnish because the first couple of brush loads of varnish will be way too thin if you've got a lot of paint thinner in your brush. So brush out the paint thinner. That, that technique is if you're not sure if your brush might have some dust in it or not. If it's a brand new brush, brush sometimes the bristles are um, stuck together a little bit with something just so they stay straight and don't get rumpled in shipping. And then you want to make sure you free the bristles and make sure they're loose and dust free. Even a new brush actually can have dust in it. So make sure your brush is dust free. Okay, then the next tool, is, and this is almost indispensable, is a filter. Now. Um, Paint filters, paint is considerably thicker than varnish and will hide bigger lumps of debris in the uh, final coat. With varnish, you really want a varnish filter 
or a fine paint filter, not just a regular paint filter. This is a much finer mesh um, in a varnish filter. I doubt you can see this, but I'm going to hold it up for you anyway. That's a very, very fine mesh there. Um, and that is what keeps the varnish clean, keeps any dust particles, except very minute ones, out of your varnish. And so the coat of varnish will be as thick as, this, as the biggest dust particle that can ever get into your varnish. Okay, clean container. I wipe the container out with the tack rag first. Tack rags are the other important tool. Oh, a vacuum cleaner is a good tool. I vacuumed everything out, so there really shouldn't be any dust anywhere in this area. Because I vacuumed the sides of the boat, vacuumed all along the rail, vacuumed down inside the boat. So um, a vacuum cleaner is an important tool too. So these tack rags are continually sort of tacky, sticky, um, and that's how they pick up dust. You could use a little acetone on a paper towel, but it's not going to do quite as good a job as the tack rag, an official tack rag. Okay, so with the tack rag, tack out your container first before you put the varnish in. Filter your varnish as you put it into the container. And um, so I don't forget, I want to mention on this first coat of varnish, we did thin it significantly, 20% um, thinner, up to 35 or 40% thinner on the first coat. And that's because the Okume will take the varnish really easily. It um, will, will soak in enough varnish that you don't have any problem with adhesion. The Sapili is very hard wood though. The varnish will tend to, if you use full strength varnish on that first coat, it'll tend to sit on top of the wood and not penetrate the wood. And then you might at some point get separation between the wood and the varnish. So um, we've thinned this varnish significantly so it's quite, quite a bit thinner than out of the can and that should let it penetrate the sapili really nicely. Okay, and what varnish? Of course the varnish is significant. There are quite a few choices of varnish. Um, what we're looking for is a gloss exterior polyurethane varnish. You could use a gloss exterior um, traditional varnish which is uh, based, basically a linseed oil um, based varnish. Uh, but the polyurethanes tend to be a little tougher, they're harder if they get impacted, um, less likely to scratch, and in our testing they do last a little bit longer. Another advantage of the polyurethane varnishes is they dry typically overnight, they're ready for another coat the next day, and after two or three coats in another uh, day after the last coat they'll be dry and essentially ready to use. Whereas the traditional varnishes Sometimes even if it's not, if it's really warm, you might not see this problem. But if it's a little bit cooler, even after two or three weeks, sometimes if something's left pushing against the varnish, it can still leave a mark. The varnish takes longer to set up, absolutely. Um, uh, so it's so it won't get marked if it's a traditional varnish. So these polyurethanes are good. This per particular one is an Epiphanes, and. Um, you can see there, Epiphanes. It's made in Holland. This is probably my favorite of all varnishes. You won't find a better varnish than this. There are others that are pretty comparable. Um, we actually use a lot of uh, Z-Spar Captain's varnish, and that's an excellent varnish as well. Um, you can go to uh, a less expensive version of varnish, um, something that you could find at Home Depot. Uh, what is their brand? It comes in a green can. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I know it well. And um, a gloss, gloss spar varnish or a gloss polyurethane varnish for exterior use. That's the key thing, exterior use. But with varnishes you do get what you pay for. If it's less expensive, you're probably not getting as much in the way of ultraviolet sunblock filters in your varnish. And so um, if your boat's going to be outside in the sun very much, either while you're paddling or in between paddles, you really will do well with the marine varnishes that are higher priced but will give you more ultraviolet protection. And also 
Um, some of the some of the more expensive varnishes uh, build a little faster, uh, and so fewer coats will give you a superior job uh, over the same number of coats of a less expensive varnish. However, um, Minwax. Um, there we go. Lowe's has a green can of gloss spar varnish polyurethane exterior that is made by Minwax and that actually does apply quite nicely um, if you're especially concerned. This uh, the Epiphanes is top of the line price wise as well as quality. Um, if you're wanting to um, do a nice job but not spend quite as much on varnish you could do um, three coats of Minwax the less expensive uh, varnish from Lowe's or any of the um, any of the bigger home Home Depot type stores um, and then go over it with one or two coats of a more expensive varnish with higher ultraviolet sunblock filters like the, the um, Epiphanes or the Spark Captain's varnish so a lot of, a lot of options there okay now um, <laughs> a little mosquito there uh, we're moving into uh, an early spring here okay so let's tack everything first and um, Take your time, make sure you don't miss anywhere. Once you get uh, dust in your brush, it's not just the part, the place you missed when you tack isn't just, isn't the only place that's going to come out with dust bumps in it. Once you get dust in your brush, everything's going to, the whole job's going to have dust bumps in it because your brush will spread the dust over the entire area. Okay. So you want to be, dust is the big enemy here. Now if this were the final coat, I would not be wearing what I'm wearing. I got sort of a fuzzy shirt on. Uh, that's not ideal for varnishing. But since it's the first coat and it's going to get numerous coats on top and get sanded in between, I will not be quite as concerned about dust. So we can probably wear this coat. Okay, so now we're all tacked down nicely, looking beautiful. Watch while you're tacking, make sure there are no places where you missed with your sanding and need to go back and sand some more. Okay, we'll get the filter out of there. Oh, the last tool I forgot to mention is the mixing stick. And um, again, that's another possible source for dust. So make sure you tack your mixing stick off before you start. And here we go. We're going to start on your side so you can start over here so you can see the technique. Now you don't want to just plunge your brush in. You want to just dip it in about a quarter of an inch, maybe three-eighths of an inch. And um, that should give you just about the right amount of varnish. You can, if you dip it just right, you probably don't need to tip it off on the side because you don't have excess varnish. Now the starting uh, concept is you're going to place the varnish. You're going to place the varnish over the area that you expect the varnish to cover. So a um, bit of guesswork there but uh, we're going to start, let's start here and place it like this. Okay, just by tapping the boat with the brush. Um, the first tap quite light because your brush is loaded and as you progress the third or fourth tap a little heavier. Okay, and then brush it out. Okay, touch more varnish. No, it's just, that was less than a quarter of an inch. Tap, 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 brush it out. Okay, nice. Now we're always going to be brushing towards, we're going to, always going to be brushing towards our wet varnish. Tap, 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 got a little more on the brush that time, so I'm going to spread it a little bit more. Now the idea of placing your varnish is because you don't want to just start brushing in one place. Your brush will be really loaded with varnish and you get a very heavy coating of varnish in that place where you started. And then um, where you, where, when you keep brushing uh, your coverage will get lighter and lighter uh, because your brush is no longer loaded heavily. So um, then you're trying to kind of equalize it by smudging the varnish where you started 
along to where it's too light. And partly you're doing a lot more work. And partly varnish doesn't like to smudge along. It doesn't like to move. So you're still going to end up with a heavy load in one place and too light in another if you don't place your varnish first. Okay, so placing it and brushing out. Always brushing into your wet varnish. And temperature wise, um, this is pretty nice now. It's probably about 55 out here. If it's too cold, your varnish may not flow very well. The varnish will be too thick. If it's too warm, it's harder. Uh, this is a pretty small varnish job here, but if it's too warm, it's a lot harder to keep a wet edge. Your varnish is going to be setting up so quick as you put it on that if you're doing like the whole width of the deck, as you progress from one side to the other, you'll have a varnish dry, drying up before you get back to that to brush into your wet edge. So if it's um, over 75, that's going to make it a little bit harder for you. And if it's if you're trying to do this, uh, do fine varnish job in the sunlight, um, you're really challenging yourself. It's very, very hard to varnish in direct sunlight. The light is nice, you can see what you're doing, but the sunlight sets the varnish off way too fast. So um, unless it's quite cool, you don't want to be in direct sunlight. Also, direct sunlight probably implies being outdoors. If it's inside and the sunlight's coming through the glass, uh, that's probably not going to be a problem in the glass. Will mute the sunlight enough. But um, varnishing outdoors is quite difficult as well because the wind will blow dust into your varnish <laughs> almost inevitably and you won't get quite as good a coat. Okay, but one of the nice things about varnish is your first coats and isn't that looking gorgeous? That looks absolutely splendid. Uh, really brings out the highlight between the lighter colored Okume and the darker colored Sapili. Okay, Oh, and um, you know, wind will carry dust across your varnish and you'll inevitably get stuff in your varnish. Uh, any air movement uh, will carry dust, dust across your varnish. You don't want any fans moving, blowing air uh, while you're varnishing. You don't want people walking by. You don't want doors or windows open. Um, you want everything still and quiet because the more air that moves across, the air has dust in it automatically. The more air that moves across your surface, the more dust is going to land in your varnish. Now the key with varnish, once you get it, you, you place it, you brush it out, and you leave it. Um, if you go back and keep working on it, uh, keep brushing over it, um, you're going to have brush marks because it will have partially set, partially dried in the time that you're working it. So put it on, brush it out, leave it. And um, the other thing about varnish, with this thin varnish, it's almost thin like water, um, so it's very easy to put on a thin coat. Um, if your varnish is too thick, you'll be getting too thick a coat, and you get runs and sags. Varnish always goes on um, a lot of coats, very light coats. If you try to uh, <laughs> speed things up and um, put on a heavier coat to get more build faster, you're going to get runs and sags and a mess, and it's very hard to take care of that neatly. So very thin coats. Okay, I think um, I'll finish this up, and I think you've seen what you need to for tonight, as far as the initial varnishing, and um, it's exciting to be varnishing. That's pretty close. We'll get the whole boat varnish, probably three coats. Um, should do a really nice job. If you wanted to do a fourth coat, that's, you know, that's your option, and could work well too. Let's see if we can get these lights better. Um, and then we'll, um, well, well, actually, before we, we're just doing a little, little varnishing because it's so tempting, and it's going to look so nice with the, for even the first coat of varnish on the, the bare wood here. But um, our next, uh, next time together, we'll put those tubes across on the back deck and uh, the carbon fiber tubes across, and um, then we'll varnish the entire boat, three or four coats, and then, um, then we'll put on the back deck the. Uh, film that goes on the back deck. And um, what else do we have? We still have, um, we still have the, the uh, loop at the front. 
It's nice to have some kind of loop at the front of a boat to, if you want to leave the boat in the water and tie it to something or if you want to pull it, grab the loop at the front and pull the bow out of the water as you walk up the, you know, grassy slope or something. Um, so we'll get that loop in the front. But then I think we're ready to paddle, which is wonderful. I <laughs> can't wait. In fact, my daughter's coming back from university uh, in a, another couple of weeks. And um, I'm hoping to get to paddle with her and let her try it out. So, um, so that should give us enough time to uh, get everything done. Okay, we'll see you later. Bye now. And again, clothing. This is, don't wear this kind of stuff when you're varnishing, okay? Um, maybe the first coat is not so critical. You have three, three coats to uh, perfect your technique here, but don't get runs and sags in your early coats because there's no really good way to solve that. Um, there's no really good way to get rid of runs and sags. You have to let the varnish set up till it's really hard and dry. And that, in a run, since it's a lot, a thick accumulation of varnish, that can take like three weeks before you can sand it actually. If you sand before that it just mushes and stuff. If you see runs, brush them out right away of course. Um, if, uh, you know, I have on small projects, I've wiped all the varnish off because I, when I'm spraying, I've got to run. I'll just take paint thinner and wipe the whole thing off, start over entirely. Um, it's that bad to have a run. So very thin, very thin coats of varnish um, and just count on putting, you know, a number of coats on. It's very quick and easy and fun to varnish. Um, so don't try to cut corners. And if your varnish is too thick, you're going to get it on the boat too thick and you will get runs and sags and it'll be a little disappointing and a lot more work in the end actually. So make sure your varnish is thin enough. Um, one thing that I could have mentioned earlier when we were uh, looking at the varnishes, varnish companies recommend they almost all produce and market a thinner for their varnish. That's a really good idea to have a an official thinner. I'm cheating a little bit but I know this works. Um, don't experiment too much uh, but I'm using Epiphane's varnish and I'm using a, um, a uh, Z-Spar thinner uh, for Z-Spar varnish. They're pretty compatible, so I'm not, they're both polyurethane varnishes and I've had perfectly good luck with this before, so I'm not worried about it. But um, ideally you'd have an Epiphanes brushing thinner for an Epiphanes varnish and then you know you're not going to have any problems at all. So again, the right tools, the right materials can yield um, a really good job and you'll be really pleased at the results. Okay, um, that should be pretty much all you need to know about varnishing. We'll probably give you a glimpse a little bit later and we'll probably, uh, we'll definitely switch to a bigger brush when we're doing larger areas. Um, with small brush it'll be very hard to keep a wet area, wet line on your work um, because uh, it just takes so long to get all the varnish in place with a small brush. So we'll be switching to a larger brush um, when we do the large areas. Okay, just wanted to give you a preview and um, Boy, does it look nice. Okay, well, you can have a beautiful boat. There. Okay, 